All right, and welcome to another installment of the Mythgard Weekly Open. I am your host, Brasaya, here with my co-host, returning from a brief, uh, brief break, Noah. Hello. It's good to be back. Yeah. You excited? I, we got uh, some... Uh, I am. We got some, uh, we got some good, uh, good games to watch today. We are going to be starting off with Hazaj and Chumzy, two veterans of the MWO. We are going to be only doing three rounds of Swiss into a top four this week. And next week, actually, we will uh, we will be taking an off week. Yes. Due to me moving and Noah having work, we will uh, be taking a, a one-week break. But let's go ahead and get this going. Right now, we have Hazaj on dire control. And Chumzy is on... Um, Major Tom Brains, which I actually, <laughs> um, I helped him with that name. So, uh, looking, looking at these lists side by side, I am excited because we see two aspects of deck building on display at the moment mm -hmm. with Chumsy choosing to play lots of multiples, lots of play sets. And Hazaj has quite a few one-ofs and two-ofs. Mm -hmm. And so we'll get to see if the consistency of the play sets in Chumzy's deck helps to deal with the utility of the ones and twos in Hazaj's list. Yeah, yeah it should be good. Right now, we're going to go ahead and get everybody started. So give us one moment while we get this feature match going. So, we have Hazaj and Chemzy jumping into game. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and follow them in there. Once again, we do not have the overlay working, which we're aware of. Um, we do apologize. We're working on it. It's uh, rather difficult trying to make it stream across different accounts. So... We will be working on that for um, the April 27th, I believe, um, MWO. Fire yes, Song Prodigy coming down. Um, Getting that ignition will be It's going to be really awesome. big. I believe Hazaj, well, let's see. Hazaj has Thanes. Uh, I actually don't think the ignition does too much against Hazaj's list. Oh man, Raider coming down. Sap one is really good. Draw like that, but the double or the triple red is just so resource heavy that it's kind of hard yes, to pull off most of the time. Yeah, I we don't see it much in these dual faction lists because of that. I think we uh, it, it's kind of a steep cost. Mm -hmm. Wheel coming down. Yeah, the wheel's going to silence out the enchantment. That should... Not only does it help stop damage, but it gives you a safe spot to mm -hmm. play minions and avoid any of the kill spells that yeah. Jemzy maybe have at this point. Grim's going to come down. How do you feel about that card? I like it. How do you feel about it? Um, I, I really like it. I think it's like, very uh, versatile and, uh, you know, it's it does what it does really well. I think it's in a really good spot in a mono red build. It's got kind of a, a yucky mouth, though. Wow. Oh, yeah. Art's great, but... Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is going to die out now, though.
Calliope Mew's not going to contest the Thane on the left-hand side. It looks like Chumsy's wanting to just stick to this opposite side. And kind of contest Hazash's damage. Yeah. And just, and just hopefully not get blown out, I guess, or controlled out of the game. I mean, when yeah. Hazaj is playing the the control color combination, like gotta yeah, we've be seen that careful. week in and week out now. That yeah, gotta be super if you careful. Want, if you want to have the best suite of kill spells, mm -hmm. that's the combo to do it in. Yeah, it's red blue without a doubt. Iker feast coming down. Ignition getting burned. Crimson pack. He's going to get rid of Magnus. That's really good. That's really good for Chumsy. And we still see this Ignition being held. Chumsy's going to have to essentially wait until seasons change and the Ignition mm. can kill the Thane. Oh. But maybe not now. Yeah, maybe not. Oh. Okay. Okay. So the option is still available should the season change in time. What? Let me double check that, actually. Yeah, no, it's not. I don't think this ignition is going to get to go off safely on this thing. No, because the the wheel's giving it warded anyways. Yeah, that too. <laughs> I really like uh, Chumsy's color combination. Crimson Pack is going to eliminate another mythic. Second pack. It's, but that's nine damage Chumsy's taken on these packs. Yeah. How do you feel about moving all the way to the left side with this minion to avoid getting cowed? I think it's I think it's a good play. Because the only lanes not blocked by that Thane would have been this leftmost lane, mm -hmm. and then the two lanes that would have let Cow come down and take two minions. Yeah. So Chumsy looking to avoid that completely potential issue. This was a good move to the left by Hazash mm -hmm. just now because the season hasn't changed to the point that the ignition would have killed that Thane yet. And Ooh. now Chumsy has to blow double ignition instead. Yeah. But is going to be able to swing in for seven. That's going to be really good. Yeah, Ice spike. Coming in. Yeah. Nice. But Thane clear. still needs to take the minion in combat. Yeah, clear field. Um, Chumsy. Kind of relying on a really good top deck over these next couple turns, but Hazaj does have complete card advantage right here. I mean, yeah, Chumsy's just playing off top decks. Yeah, and I don't know how well Chumsy's deck plays off of the top deck. Looking at the list, I don't think Chumsy has too many awesome top decks. Yeah, not in a situation like this when the hand advantage is five. And the Calliope Muse is about to put in damage as well. Mm -hmm. I could see if there was like a seven ring ritual or something like that, maybe. Yeah. But uh, Living Mountain's list. also going to be a massive problem. Yeah, Living Mountain is something we haven't seen much. Mm -hmm. But we have a couple people playing it today. And it fills that slot of... I just need damage. You know, yeah. that's that's what Living Mountain does. It oh, just pushes damage. Cataclysm is going to push the damage over. Chumsy falls. Oh, and one to Hazaj. Oh, man. That was a quick game. Yes, it was. Uh, looking at this week's list, I think we'll have a lot of quick games this week. Yeah, I mean, that's... Hey... I mean, if uh, this ends up being a three-hour event, that'll be a, that'll be a first. It will. Uh, we do have less people this week than we've had in the last couple of weeks, so it won't be quite as long anyway. But I think the quality of games will still be as high. Oh yeah, I'm not not concerned about the quality. We have some fantastic the players. Will be yeah, a little less. Yeah, we have a we have a fantastic group of players still. 
Um, you know, size doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm not a... <laughs> All right, we'll, let's uh, wait we'll for leave it. that one alone. Yeah, we'll leave that one for Twitch chat. Let's go ahead and wait for them to get into their next game. Actually, oh, the game's going on. Oh, there it is. They jumped right into it. Yes. Gave me no time. I really like that card back that Hazaj has. Yeah, we haven't talked about the uh, the sleeve choices yet this this mm -hmm. match, which we tend to do. And I like this one Hazaj has. Yeah. A lot, actually. I don't think I have that one, so I'm going to have to uh, play hunt. until I do. <laughs> yeah, hunt that one down for sure. I definitely do not have that one as well. Um, I like Chumsies, though. I was a real big fan of it last week. I'm happy to see it's still around. Ice Spike's going to be coming down. Burning the Bolt. To play a Bolt. Yep, there it is. Bolt is something we get to talk a lot about this week because mm -hmm. Bolt has been knocked down peace. a few pegs. Yeah, rest in peace, Bolt. Finally falling out of the most played commons. Yeah. And now, do you think that has to do with the size of the tournament? Do you think that has to do with the number of uh, people that usually play Bolt not being here? What do you What do you think it is? Are I... people just moving away from... Uh... I have some ideas on that, but we'll mm -hmm. save that when we get into the, uh, into the, the comments stats, yeah. segment. We'll discuss that a bit in depth. But I do have some ideas as to why this has happened. All right, all right. Bragi's going to come down, be able to safely contest the Calliope Muse if Chumsy chooses to do so. If I'm Chumsy, I'm hoping I see one of my packs, like, now. Yeah. Froggy's just so good at a 3-5. Yeah, it is. Uh, Wings Ooh, is also Wings. very good at a 5-1. Yeah, this is... That's 9 damage that was just pushed. Like, mm -hmm. this... It's what I like so much about this enchantment is... It causes these big damage pushes. Mm -hmm. And... We... I think we'll see a lot of that... Yeah. This week. Uh, a, a lot of... Fast swingy games yeah chat is saying delete broggy uh i believe i saw a message in chat this week about it getting some touch up in the upcoming patch Ooh, yeah you think it's uh, yeah then this new patch i believe is gonna Fu be really huge about it. uh that's that's one of the reasons i'm sus suspecting a lot of uh a lot of the regulars have taken a break they don't want to burn themselves out before a massive patch that's gonna change a lot of different things in this game so i also got like twitchcon going on and stuff yeah there's also a bunch of different events but it's uh i'm really excited for this patch uh hopefully i'm all moved in and squared away before it drops that way yes. i have enough time to do that and uh couple other things i need to do but i'm really excited to build and brew i have about 11 to twelve thousand essence saved up right now so i'm gonna be able to theory craft some stuff maybe i should just get some good mythics but personally i'm i'm gonna be testing out a lot of the new cards that get changed around you could also go the path that i've seen some people talk about in this Q account that the devs have talked about. Those oh. of you that don't know, when when this patch does happen, some of the most active folks in the community mm -hmm. might be getting access to a Q account, which would let them play with all of that new stuff to get some some intense balance. So that is, yeah, that's going to be very very sick, nasty. I'm really excited. It, it's cool that. that the devs have chosen to do it that way as well yeah exactly crimson pack gonna get rid of the broggy necessary yeah. moves grim coming down on shadow trapeze not being able to ignition out this howling abyssal is going to be big yeah but when you can't ignition the Howling Abyssal, you can always ignition the face instead. 
and Chumsy's going to scoop it out. Did not quite have the damage to finish yeah. the game. That's yeah. two O to Hazaj, yes? Yes, Hazaj yeah. is two O. Let's go ahead and see if we got any other updates. I've started asking people to report during their games. Uh, so after a game, just quickly report your win. Logic is one and O against uh, Milficia. And so do we want to jump in on that one? Yeah, let's go ahead and jump in on that one. Not unfollow. There we go. And give me a moment while I quickly update this. Yeah, we've got... So you said Logic is up 1-0 on Maleficia? Yes. Okay, Maleficia with a Gamma Yun on field. Gallows Boy coming down. I believe Maleficia is one of the people on a mono deck this week. Let me oh, double yeah. check that. Yeah, we have some interesting spice this week. Yeah, we have two mono decks this week, and Maleficia is indeed one of them. <laughs> Love it. I know you're a big uh, proponent to mono decks in your card games, and I do big feel fan. the same. I do feel the same way. Pretty much every card game I've ever played, I started off with some sort of mono colored, mono themed deck. Well, it's, um, and it, it's the just the easiest. To build. Exactly. And sometimes they're just insanely good, too. And yeah, that too. Yeah, and, like, well, they get slept on a lot. Something else that plays into that is the consistency of them. But I don't think that's so much an issue in this game with the way the mana system functions. Yeah. So I don't think mm -hmm. we see an attachment to mono decks because of a consistency yeah. issue in this game. But I do like seeing the mono decks popping yeah. up. Yeah, exactly. Wing's going to come down once again, maybe getting a Shadow Trapeze thrown on it. I don't know about that so much as... Yeah, I was going to say, I'd just slam it into this Gamma Yun. Yeah, and then... Uh, what's the count on Gallows Boy this week? The Gallows Boy. Gallows Boy is something else we'll, we'll talk about in the comments section because Gallows Boy is popping his head up in that stat as well. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. That's interesting. I'm really excited. I, we're... That's good damage. Vedma Sky Ranger is a hell of a card. I like it. I, I like seeing, and again, this is something kind of unique to this mana system, and paying just the gems. Not, mm -hmm. You don't need to spend mana. You just need to burn your gems. Exactly. Yeah, so like, it doesn't affect the ability to smite to yeah. activate that ability. But it, it's, it's neat to see those types of effects, that utilization yeah. of some of the unique mechanics of this game yeah it's very uh as i would say spicy i'm a pretty big fan daring coming down gonna swing past the gallus boy pushing yeah, for like damage this. at this point i like that a lot yeah i mean it's logic knows that they're at 16 Melifish is at seven you just you got to close it out i mean there's seven on the board right now you have to swing in with your gallus boy to get rid of of that minion or else you're dead well maleficia does play a play set of detained so mm -hmm. okay we could be seeing and there's the detained. the detained attaboy attaboy no with the big now, calls the question That's... is do you sweet spin a red oh man i was going to say do you bounce that and have to deal with it again but this fixes that issue too by just mm -hmm. killing it yep because you don't want to swing the gallows boy in and just lose it in that situation it opens up the middle of the field to attacks against a deck that's going to push that damage and punish that yeah exactly and we're we're still going to see Maleficia be on a three turn clock essentially um it's ignition getting burned avenging I like alpha taking, i like taking the minion but at what point do you think logic decides to just push damage to face like i i like that ignition but yeah at what point do you think the next ignition goes face i think we've hit that point now and we see capoccio has finished fighting so we will get an update on capoccio's match as well as soon as we can take control of an enemy oh no <gasps> big wow. moves 
Oh, man. I like that it goes upside down when it's been yeah. stolen. Is Logic going to be able to close this one out? This feast. is gutsy. Yeah, that's a big feast. I think Logic's just looking to find ignitions. Man, double ignition off of that would be. No, something. you you get you got uh you got uh you got corrected in the Twitch chat. I'm gonna Capocchio, I'm gonna attempt. Thank you, Capocchio. We, we I, apologize and we'll note that. Yeah, we uh, I'll be completely honest. I I'm really happy you said it first and it got corrected because I was gonna say uh, cappuccino and that is not at all correct. <laughs> that, is, that is not it. <laughs> Gallows boy coming down, just trying to defend at this point. Fire song prodigy. See, like we have one of the ignitions now. It's it's. If we so, would have pushed with the ignition earlier, then you hold lethal now. But mm -hmm. if you didn't ignition, then you'd have the damage coming in off of that Vedma, and who knows what this might look like. Yeah, you, because it's, it is it's agile. such an iffy call on when to make that change to yeah. focusing face. Yeah, and I'm not one to really call out people's plays like that because when you're in that situation, you're going to determine what's best for what you believe, and. Oh boy, that's a that's and a it's, big and yeah, we're gonna have to do something. It's especially there. difficult to commentate that call not knowing what else. Logic yeah, has exactly. At, hand at the time the call is made, exactly because we don't know what else is in the hand. So um, you know, maybe the line to us is uh, different than what the line is to the player, which yes. is one of the reasons I actually enjoy the way that. And there it is, and there's the closeout from Logic. Um, that's actually one Good of the reasons game. I enjoy. Uh, the the style of um, you know uh, spectating. There's the word that uh, that Mythgard allows us to do. I'm a huge fan of that. Now it looks like Capocchio is still in game. We had a slight issue with them accidentally choosing a deck they didn't mm. sign up with and having to scoop out game one and go back in. Yeah. So that game will not be counted. Mm -hmm. And because of that, it looks like Capocchio is still playing. So we'll jump in and get in some of this game as well. Yeah. Which is one of the, one of the more iffy things on, uh, online card games i've definitely done that i'll be in a tournament and i'll bring the wrong deck and i'll be like oh no yeah whereas if this was a real life card game you know that's very unlikely to happen yeah and it, it happens Mis yeah, it's, happen. it's not a big it's deal not, by any means yeah so i really like that done is i really like that card a couple back. minutes yeah i really like that card back which one kilimanjaro's card back Oh, me too. I like that design a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we've got a few of them, and I, it's a design I enjoy. Yeah. Makes me think of, like, old-time philosophy sketches. You know, you see, like, <laughs> yeah. the guy with the body, and he's you know, basically T-posed. And that, that's <laughs> kind of what that makes me think of. So I didn't notice until just now that the uh, the Valk dying actually causes a little skull effect on the face as this minion gains a buff. Mm -hmm. I hadn't noticed that until just now. It's those little details I like so much. Yeah, I really like. Uh, oh, what's the card with the rats? I'm gonna butcher its name. Um, I have to look it up because I don't even know how to like attempt to pronounce it. I, I don't know which one you mean. Hold on one moment. We should also note Capocchio is the... Excuse me, Capocchio is the second of the mono decks this week. Oh, playing boy. a mono blue list 
that is actually the most expensive deck of the week. Yeah. And it might be the most expensive deck anybody has signed up to the MWO with. <laughs> Jeez. So, I have to double check that stat, but I think it's like 6,000 above anything else we've seen anyone play. Jeez. Troika set deck has... is, the, is the card I was talking about with the little, uh, with the little rats. When, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, when, yeah. You, when you cast it, it makes like a little rat with a little crown over your deck, and I think that's that's a fantastic little uh, little small detail that's thrown in there. We have Logic saying that they'll be playing Mythic Dot Deck next week. Oh which boy, would be fun to see. But if you do it next week, nobody would see it because, as we said a little while ago, we will not be having an MWO next week on the twentieth. The next we MWO will. will be on the 27th. <laughs> yeah. So at the moment, Kapokio's 10 Mythic <laughs> most expensive deck will stay the most expensive yeah. at least until the 27th. That's hilarious. How do you feel about Soma Oasis? Um, I think it's really good. I mean, it it's lost. It's cost me enough games where I don't like playing against it. <laughs> Sometimes you just need to be able to wipe the board nice and safely, but you can't. And it's because of Oasis. still see quite a high life total at the moment too do we have a, a game count on this match by the way um i believe kilimanjaro is up 1-0 okay that's that's what i was thinking and we still got plenty of time until time is called i think this is the last game going on and is, they've fact. still got 18 minutes so yeah. I'm not too much of an issue just yet. Yeah, I mean, if remember, if Burton's not playing in an event, it could close out <laughs> in under. It could each round's going to probably round out about twenty twenty five minutes. So I'm going to love that <laughs> this one will take significantly less time than we'll just blame Burton that, than, than the ones he's been playing in, <laughs> and it's on the week that they didn't play. And I'm I'm going to get to tease oh, quite yeah. a bit about that, and I'm going. How, how do you feel about Enchant Eater's art? I like it. I love the pun in the name, too. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a big fan of... The puns. Pun names. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a big fan of the art, too. He just looks so happy. It makes me think of something out of Candyland. Like if... Yeah. Oh, yeah. I get, I get yeah. that. As long as they're not eating the candy from a uh, sweet spinneret, I think it'll be okay. Ice Spike getting burned back to the deck. Bringing Kapokio up to six. I like that move. Mm -hmm, big fan as well. Going to be essentially able to close out the maze no matter what. Well, yeah, you stop Ooh. the maze, but you also save the minion so it doesn't die to a 2-7. Mm -hmm. Rider is a card that we don't see that often that I feel yeah. like is a very good engine for Valkyrie decks oh, I spent some time playing the mono blue Valks mm -hmm. list and I ended up messing up a good chunk of my collection to pick up a copy <laughs> yeah I uh, I don't think I have any yellow uncommons. Ooh. Like, it got that bad. <laughs> I, was, I have to have this. That's fair. And then I ended up cutting it and then switching decks. So... <laughs> 
we do see the Cadejo now. We've seen the last few weeks these Cadejos pick up and play quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And especially they spiked in the token week. But I'm, I'm a big fan of the kind of dual setup stuff like the Cadejos and the Twins and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Twitch chat's bringing up a good uh, question. Is this the first appearance of Enchant Eater in the MWO? I want to say... Off the top of my head, I think it is. I, I also want to say I think it is as well. I don't think we've seen it before, um, but I could definitely see it developing in this meta um, based off of what we've seen. I mean, people are stacking their decks with enchantments, and I think having Chan Eater to kind of eliminate them is... Uh, yeah, I and see this... It could see it this is kind of an adaptation of the token lists we saw a few weeks ago mm -hmm. and i think that's a solid addition to those lists yeah for sure the fact that it has agile means that you only have to play it close to a an enchantment mm -hmm. you want to take out it does not have to be played immediately opposite that enchantment mm -hmm. so it allows you to not only take out enchantments, but do so while still setting up optimal blocks with such yeah. a good defensive body. Yeah. Soma Oasis. This is. It, it's neat to see, and I guess not quite so much against the mono blue deck, mm -hmm. but the kill spells just being shut off by playing a minion on a Soma Oasis. And there we go, mm -hmm. Twitch chat. I have the score updated. Forgot to click. <laughs> I forgot to click the unhide button. It's got this little eye thing. I forgot to click it. My bad. That was a lot of damage. Yeah, this is gonna. I, be... I mean, it wasn't a lot of damage. It was one damage to face. <laughs> but this, this puts up a lot of damage, is what I'm. Yeah. Insane. Yeah, an eight five is uh pretty big. Yeah, it would have been a lot of damage against any minion that didn't have such a big defensive body. Yeah. Very thick defensive body. Now, do we think... Oh, Perry at the gates. I was about to say, do we think Kilimanjaro is going to have a way out of this? Now, one thing that is kind of cool to see was mm -hmm. we just had the anti-enchantment minion on field. Mm -hmm. And we also see Kapokio using this necklace, playing this necklace, and being able to put enchantments in hand mm -hmm. back to the bottom of the deck. Mm -hmm. So within just the context of this one game even we had the ability of Kapokio playing enchantments and they they wouldn't stay totally uncontested yeah. but then Kapokio had the option to mitigate the fact that the enchantments had been shut off by just putting them back and getting something else so we saw multiple levels of engagement with the play choices just now mm -hmm. and I, that was neat to see this game is getting very close i feel like it could still swing either way yeah this, um, this game has been a lot of fun to watch it's, yeah uh, it's been little bits of damage mm -hmm. on both sides just kind of chipping away getting to a point to potentially set up a big lethal push. Yeah, exactly. And I think the Thane generation is just going to really cause a whole lot of problems. Yeah, it is. 
the the fact that you get such a good body yeah. off of this is so nice. Yeah. But Thane is no slouch. Yeah, if it was like a 2-2 two, two, instead of a 2-3, maybe I'd be like, eh. But a 2-3 yeah, for 2. Thane is something that we see having play just on its own. Uh huh. So to just make them and not have to also include them. Yeah, although... very good. Kapokio might. Let me double check that. Does Kapokio play Thanes in this list? No. No Thanes Seal coming in the down. Seal of Exile. Gonna make a big move. Seal of Exile is so good. Still leaving Kilimanjaro in a situation that I do not think they want to be in. Sabo um, going back. Zolia coming down. Gonna mitigate some damage. We still see a lot of damage on this opposite end, but like the Zolia is going to eat up mm -hmm. damage on the left side, but we still see five damage minimum going in. Yeah. And this is the point that just playing the mono blue, you don't have access to ignition, which would mm -hmm. close this game out. Yeah. We'll have to see if Kapokio sequences these attacks well. And be because I see one line that would cause some missed damage. Oh! That's Morning awful. Wives coming down, being a 9 8, 10 9. Yeah, it's Singing Stone now. And even. Like, like now we have to find. Life gain, which we see in mend, but it won't be enough. Yeah, Kilimanjaro but is going to throw something up the well happened that as well. Somehow, kept this game going. Uh -huh. Pokio still had a handful of Thanes lined up to come down. Yeah, and that does make this one one-one, I believe. With eight minutes until time, that's this could be. Oh, this one boy. could be going to time. We'll have to double check the count on that. Yeah. And they are back into their next game. Yes, 1-1. One, one. We have eight minutes until time is called. But remember, they do get a 10-minute extension. So, yes, roughly 18 minutes before uh, anything has to be uh, determined. So, still plenty of game to be played. Yeah, tons of game. Looking at these life totals, I was just thinking about when I had just gotten into this game. I was completely confused. I didn't notice that the paths had changes to life totals on them. Yeah. Like, I completely skipped that little line at the top and just began looking at the effect text. And I was like, man, I don't get <laughs> why this happens. Do we just get assigned some amount between X and Y? What's going on? It took me... Almost a half dozen games, I'd say, to actually catch on to what was happening. <laughs> and then you're like, oh. Yeah, now I get it. I just didn't read. Okay. <laughs> Maze coming down all the way to the side like we often discuss. Uh, is the best. Yeah, you. it leaves the opponent with less lanes to attack the maze on, mm -hmm. and it also doesn't block minion movement by placing immobile someplace in the middle of the field. Yeah.
Fokio kind of in a bit of a spot at the moment, actually, because yeah, we'll see the smite pass. This is going to be a lot of damage coming back. And something else that I noticed as I was looking at these deck lists as they got submitted last night. Mm -hmm. We talked a little bit in the last game about this being kind of an adaptation of that tokens list we saw a few yeah. weeks ago. One of the changes that's been made is actually not in the deck itself, but by taking Mend instead of Infuse. And it's something I like a lot. Infuse yeah. let you use a token to kind of push past some minions. Mm -hmm. But I like the idea of mending a whole field. You know, you can push a bit of damage, knock a minion mm -hmm. off of something, and mm -hmm. then just mend it back up. Yeah. Plus, the incidental life gain could be big. Mm -hmm. One thing to note this week, though, talking about this infused mend toss-up, is that we do see a couple living mountains in this week's pool. <laughs> and you can infuse all you want. I don't think you'll be pushing a 2-1 past a living mountain anytime soon. Yeah, no, for sure. So a living bit of a good call, are... I think. Yeah, living mountains play just the... an absolute unit. <laughs> yeah, it is. So I think it's a bit of a good call to play the Infuse instead this week. Mm -hmm. Man, the singing stone noise. Huh. That's something. <laughs> I like how many things have unique sound effects. Seal of Exile is going to allow for <sighs> some damage. Seal of Tokyo Exile is in, uh, is in kind of a bad way here. Yeah, Seal of Exile is also one of those things we talked about a few games ago. Mm -hmm. Playing with the idea of just using gems as a payment mechanic. Yeah. Now, Seal does also cost maximum mana, but it's it's a unique way to pay things having gem costs. That yeah. I I'm, I'm such a big fan of it. We we've, we've seen it showcased a couple times today now, and I I like seeing that. It is kind of cool to see that we just talked about that Infuse Mend toss-up, and now we see a situation that the Infuse would allow this attack to be awesome. Mm -hmm. But with it being Mend instead, can't quite, uh, can't finish this. Oh, well, that'll do it, too. Back to that closed spectating, and yeah. sometimes we go off on a tangent without seeing, but then not attacking. So even as I'm explaining the, uh... The joys of the close spectating. Mm -hmm. We see that the attack was not going to be made this time. Oh, I'm stupid. That's it why. Has, it has alpha strike. Yes, it does. <laughs> it That is a big ball of stats. I was like, yeah, there wouldn't be an attack. It has alpha strike, but <laughs> I, I guess we could attack into it. Even the close spectating. My uh, <laughs> close-minded ability to actually look at the effect. <laughs> would have caused me to make a dumb attack and maybe that's why it's best I'm casting and not uh, not playing not playing oh man yeah alpha strike is very good that yeah, is, is that minion by itself just right now is uh it's really yeah, on really second good thought what do you do about this yeah I'm not I'm not really sure how we eliminate that um <laughs> ooh I guess that's okay. Herald of Pestilence How many is uh, seals. Does this deck play? Let's look. Just I mean, the it, one copy of Seal of Exile. Oh, so Seal of Exile will not be available. Yeah, take that out. But it won't need to because Pestilence has hit the field. Yeah. Which is going to be a pretty big problem, I would say. Herald is uh, very very good. Um, let's take a look at Pokio's list and see what we might have that would deal with that. Um, yeah, nothing. I mean, you could not, ice not like... anything by itself, at least.
So we see the Valhalla coming down, but yeah. with nothing to pull back. I would take that to mean that this attack's about to happen. Yeah. I would also agree. Which I that. like. I like that play. Get get damage on the Pestilence. Get the minion back anyway. Yeah. Storm Unless I'm missing Daughter's something chosen. totally obvious again. Uh, no. I, I just don't think that there is anything. I think you actually want to let the Herald attack into you. Yeah. The life total being... As low as it is, I think that that would be fine, too. I was thinking we might see a follow-up minion in its place, but we didn't. Double the llamas now. Yeah, O-ring coming down like that is going to... Mounting a board, that is going to be very hard to deal with. Okay, and it is now time to call time. So we will let them know that the 10 minute extension is being given, but we have gone to time. Mm -hmm. Obviously 10 minutes, you might wanna just re-explain that for them in the chat. Yeah, so... For everybody in Twitch, um, essentially once we hit time in around, which is 45 minutes, um, there is a 10 minute extension. And then after that, we go off of highest life total. Yeah, at the end of the 10 minute extension, the highest life total will win. Should that game win cause the match to be a tie, the match will be noted as a tie in mm -hmm. Battle Fi. Unless it's top cut, obviously. You can't tie in top cut. So then you just play one last game to settle the match. But in Swiss, that would just be the match ending in a tie. Yeah. This is a Leo. It was a big play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this pestilence is also really, really yeah, good. Yeah, we see a lot of blight going on at the yeah, moment. Yeah, blight is just going to cause a bunch of problems. It's a neat mechanic. I like seeing it. Yeah. Now, knowing this is going to die off soon anyway, do you think you just attack into the Zulia? I think so. I feel like that's got to be the move. Well, obviously you swing with the Magnus first. Yeah. But... I think you have to... Well, wait, no, 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 the Zillia is immune, yeah? The It came down on the Soma OA. Yes, it is immune. Huh. So... I think you leave it up. You just hold it up to block. You don't have much of a choice. Yeah, not really. It's not really That shut hard. off a lot of damage. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, this... This Blight deck is a lot of fun to see. It's also an option. Slam minions to mm -hmm. buff it back up. Yeah, for sure. So it doesn't quite die to the Blight. We see the oops. I'm guessing Kapokio thought that would cause the ability to go off and give it plus one, plus one again. I think so. But that is an undead canine that makes undeads when you play Valks. So it's not actually a Valk itself. Mm-mm. Kapokio's not... going down to nine. Huh! This is such a close game. Like, Kapoki has got enough of a hand. I could see this going, going Kapokio's way still just as easily as it could. Yeah. Like this, this is a neat game state. Yeah, for sure. I mean, 
part of me thinks you just slap everything down and just start trying to just work through it. I mean, yeah, throwing down all your things and... You put down some blocking minions. You've got the Magnus that just pushed in seven. Show 12 damage uncontested on the left side at the moment. Mm -hmm. If that's not a minion in hand, then a minion would have to be top decked to stop the incoming lethal with the left side minions. Yeah. Also, the Valhalla getting back the minion that's going to make these things. It's, it's just so much fuel the whole time. Pokio has had tons of plays all game. I like this a lot. Pokio also getting to smite still, basically saying, you need to win now. Zalia going to continue spitting blight onto, onto minions as we now see. Is this seven? All seven minions have blight? No. Six of the seven minions have blight at the moment. This is, this is going to be a rough one. This is going to be close. Mm-hmm. Pokio light on kill spells, so blocking up this left side will still allow allow some blocks to be made that may just be setting up to win in time. Because we have played out five of the ten minutes of the extension now. So the game will be ending in about five minutes. And we do see the Chosen finally fall. Mm -hmm. It's been blighted so long, but keeps gaining just a, just enough to stay alive. Yeah. <sighs> this is such a, a tense situation. Yeah, I'm not really... I'm not really sure. I think you just have to try to whittle your way down. Yeah, but like the issue is the impending time. Uh huh. How many minutes left? We've got. About two and a half minutes. Uh. And this is one of those situations that I'd love to let them just play it out, but consistency consistency's sake says that we need to keep this the same. And ooh, Smite would end this game. But <gasps> oh no! Wow. Oh no! Just pulling out the win within a minute of time being called completely, actually closing the game out. What a that fantastic was, game! That was a fantastic match. Oh man! Well played by both. That was a good game. Yeah. How do we like it, chat? One of the unique things that we get to do is actually interact with our chat due to there being no delay. What happened? I looked away. Oh, man.
All right, we do have some popular stuff to talk about. Stat time. This is yeah. This is the important highlight of my weekend. <laughs> Um, because we do have such few rounds, we are going to be going over a couple of these right now, a couple of these next round, and finishing them off before we go into top four. So let's go ahead and get started on our most popular commons. We have 12 Gallows Boy, 10 Raid the Tombs and Ignition, and then 9 Shadow Trapeze. What? Yeah, so yeah, this is what a bit mind blowing to me, and I think it's a multitude of things that caused such a dynamic shift in the commons this week. I think a lot of the folks we've seen consistently playing these blue X lists into Zoa Tune, you know, the, the people who have been showing up week in and week out on some type of blue didn't show up this week, so we have. Not only less people total, but kind of a high focus of a loss in blue. And we've seen Gallows Boy on the uptick the last few weeks anyway, as it's so difficult to deal with. So I was expecting to see Gallows Boy climbing leading into this week. I was not expecting to see so little blue this week, though. And I think the combination of those two has caused quite the shift in these commons of the week yeah i mean i i pretty much agree with all of that it's it's just so shocking yeah this I is not at all what i expected to see last night when i was looking at stats yeah let's go ahead and get the most popular uncommons up as well these uh fairly fairly same <laughs> um nothing's really yeah it's actually is... something i like to see yeah so we have 12 crimson pack 11 icker feast nine calliope muse yeah so what stuck out to me is this is kind of the opposite situation of what we have with the commons in that we saw a a massive change in the most played commons this week, but the on commons yet again stayed exactly the same. It, we've had packed feast Calliope Muse multiple weeks consecutively now. And so even as we see some unease in the commons pool, these com these uncommons still tend to stand out as just undoubtedly the best choices in the uncommon slot. Yeah, and that and that all makes that makes sense. I mean, you you can't fight the consistency of a lot of these cards. Now let's see. Um, we are going to go ahead and get round two started up. Um, we are going to be putting up the featured card spotlight. Remember, if you guys have any interest in helping us with the featured card spotlight, just reach out to me or Noah, and we can get that all uh, ready to go for the April twenty seventh MWL. So we will be right back. This should only be a short break. And we will be right back with your round two.
All right, and we are back with your round two. We do have uh, one moment. Well, it's a good thing we didn't uh we didn't change the slides yet. We are now back with your round 2. We do have a, another great feature match all set up. Let's go ahead and get their deck lists up here. I'm excited. Yeah, we do have one new player as well. It's going to be their yes. first time playing. First time feature. And we get to look at one of these mono decks again. Yeah. Always, always good. Argos. And then Melficia. All right. Let's go ahead and get them all started up. Um, what do you think about this mono deck? I like the look of this deck a lot. We see... Again, we talked about last match with the consistency involved in playing play sets of a lot of things. And we see that again with Maleficia's list of a lot of play sets. Yeah, it's super exciting. Right now... Plus it's it's mono. I'm yeah. excited. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, I think right now we're just waiting for them to find each other on the ladder. And then we are going to be jumping into that. Look at the low level of essence cost on these decks. Yeah, this is two budget decks. And that's something we've seen week in and week out at mm -hmm. the MWO is a lot of good budget options. Yeah, exactly. And what's interesting about this is we... I believe this is going to be... A knockout match as well if one of these players that's quite possible one of these players lose it's out there's only three rounds of Swiss one twos do not make it into top four so this is a very important match these players have to go two one or 3 0, obviously, in somebody's case, in order to uh, in order to make it in. We do seem to have a bit of an issue getting them matched up, so we will be jumping into Hazaja's game instead at the moment, just to kind of get us into some action. Hmm. Go ahead and jump in here then while, while we work on that on the back end. <laughs> yeah. So we do see Hazaj and Logic, two vets to the MWO scene, both having played multiple times now. Yeah. Somebody who always uh, is willing to stay up pretty late for the MWO. And we appreciate that. One of the more outspoken people about how excited they are um, to play in this each week. It's really good to see. Really positive. Uh, really positive person in the community. Yeah, definitely. This community as a whole is yeah so pleasant to be around, to engage with, and be yeah. in. I I love this community. I mean, I think me and you are probably the most toxic people after how much we make fun of Burn, but that's out of love. It's not <laughs> out of real toxicity. It'll be, uh, we'll have a lot less to like, <laughs> complain about as soon as that spectating bug gets fixed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, uh, that'll be, uh, that'll be a good, uh, good gift. Yes. 
I would love to wake up and find that in the patch notes in my stocking. Yeah. Chumsy is saying that the MWO is almost as fun as the custom cards Discord tab. I'll take that. I'll well, take that. that. I'll take from it. from the head of the custom card committee? Yeah. Seems good. <laughs> Hazaja's avatar is just so icky, creepy. Yeah, it's, I'm not it's a yucky. I'm not a fan of the spiders at all. <laughs> yeah, no, same. Not seven ring ritual coming down. Nothing should have that many legs. Yeah, <laughs> you, you, you don't need that. Yeah, um, I actually I would rather hang out with one of these uh, hellions than hang out with a spider if I had to have the choice. Even though. Look at those teeth. Yeah, hey God, maybe not. Little little wings, little uh, chicken wing legs, but uh, I would uh, I would I think I would rather hang out with one of those things. At least they're smiling. I think you just cost me like ten bucks. <laughs> you said chicken wing legs, and as soon as we get done, today, <laughs> I know exactly what I'm doing. Oh. <laughs> oh man, it was that easy. Crimson Pack that easy. is going to kind of negate some stuff, but not not yeah, really. We, s we see that Banish being good, but not as good as the Banish of a Seal of Exile would have been in that situation. Yeah, exactly. And this is going to – this might be a little bit hard for Logic to really come back from at this point. Yeah, this is going to be a lot of damage. This is minimum 11 damage coming in. Yeah. Ignition is lethal. And Logic, Logic admits defeat. defeat. Yeah, just knows yeah. – yeah, Hazaj. I I like Hazaj's list this week. Yeah. Um, could you go ahead? Do you do we have any reports from the people that are offline? I will look into that and see what's going on while we watch this next game of the Hazaj Logic match. I suppose. It sounds like that'd be it. Uh... Seem to have a bit of confusion as to. We've had issues in the past with people who maybe don't quite know the Swiss system too well. Yeah, a lot of people. Thinking uh, that once they lose, they've been eliminated. Yeah, that's And that that's is not, not the that's case. That's not so how it works. You, you, you got to win. Game. You got to win out. But um, usually even in the bigger events that we do, when we have five rounds of Swiss into a top eight, there's not really a – just because you lose one game, you just – you just gotta come back from it. Let's see. Let's see if we can get them back online or back into the game before we do have to drop. Yeah, we don't want to have to do anything like that. So we'll be attempting to get some gameplay going. Liopy Muse coming down. So what's the rumor on purple? Is that coming out this month? I don't Soon? know. Soon? I, I've had a bit of a busy week and haven't been following up on the community chats as much as I usually yeah. do. Yeah, yeah, the same with the move. It's it's been putting a little bit of a a hinge on my Discord time. Now that yeah, uh, same. Yeah. Purple is not coming out this month. Not coming out this month. Okay. Confirmed by Dev. Soon enough. That's what they want you to think. Yeah. It's, uh, it's really <laughs> popular in uh, modern culture right now to do unreleased uh, drops. So because we didn't look at these lists ahead of time, as this wasn't the match we thought we'd be showing, we will talk a little bit about it now. I'm going to just kind of quickly glance at them and see if anything stands out to me. Uh -huh. Hazaj has a playset of bolts. Bless. Which, <laughs> that is like, I think we have six bolts total this week. So, not only did it fall out of the most played list, it fell a lot. It, it's like the tenth most played common this week, uh -huh. I think. At only six copies. And Hazaj has most of them. Jeez. 
both these decks have opted to only play two copies of Pact, which I think that's kind of been what I typically see. That that seems to be the amount that most people like to play Pact at is two. Not quite wanting to see all of them since typically you only want to cast two due to the life loss on the pact activation mm -hmm. so casting all of them can be a bit uh costly and especially this week with so many decks just looking to close out games quickly like logics mm -hmm. pacting too many times can and will cost you a game yeah you you can't just go buck wild on it you gotta you gotta think you gotta make sure is this absolutely necessary? And I mean, I think uh, I think minions like Bragi are absolutely necessary. Yes, it's just too good not to play. Yeah, for sure. All right, looks like Argos actually has shown up, so we're just waiting for them to get into the game with Melfisia. And hopefully we'll be we'll, able to jump into that after these games. Yeah, we'll finish out this game. If if this match ends up 1-1, we will not show the last one because we'll be moving back to what we intended to show. Uh -huh. But we will keep you updated on this match. Yeah. But we will show at least the conclusion of this game too. Well, Twitch chat's uh, hoping for a lot right now. 2v2. I, I did see something about that. It, it looks like the 2v2. Duo Q 2v2 is going to be happening this uh, in this month's patch, which means that next month we can do a 2v2 event, and that's going to be fun. Yeah, maybe, maybe the April 27th MWO is 2v2. We'll, uh, we'll we'll see make that decision sometime <laughs> in the coming days and I just I, I just I like uh, I just like poking fun at chat, making sure that they're excited and ready because that two v two pick your partner, boy. Me and Noah are gonna sweep. Yeah, gonna, we might have to find someone yeah who will we'll, we'll, event that week. Yeah, I'm trying to. I I have somebody that's lined up to cast. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, Toon's not going to be able to cast this week since there's going to be no event this week. So we're going to have to supplement something in because Toon loved casting last week. and uh, I've been told he did a good job in my absence. So yeah, I mean, it's definitely something we could look into doing again. I could listen to that voice all the time. Ideally, what <laughs> I would like to do um, is get Toon and fellow Team Rangstar member Yolis. <laughs> to cast together. Uh, I think that uh, the the accents would drive Twitch chat wild. Because they can't, they just can't handle Ooh, people Hizaj are loving down. it. Hazaj is way down in life. At the yeah, moment. this is not looking good for Hazaj. This is going to, it looks like it is going to. How many healing does Hazaj play? Uh, let's see. We've got a full set. So Hazaj, potentially with a way to gain life in hand, they'll need to do so quickly because this game is way, way too close to... Oh, the Ignition Smite's going to end it. Did not find the way to get the heal, and that will do it. Logic takes game two. Oof. And we will now be jumping in to what we intended to show you. And there we go. We are in the normal program that we were trying to trying to do. <laughs> yes. So Volkov heavy. This is a minion I don't think we see enough of. Yeah, Volkov Heavy is really good. It, it's one of those that's stat efficient in that, mm -hmm. you know, it's a 5 mana 5-5. Five, five, yeah. But it's also got a couple awesome abilities. It, it's just... So even in the situation that its text is blanked out, it's still 
cost efficient stat wise and the fact that it has upside beyond that yeah is awesome but much in the same vein as the calliope muse that's opposite it so i'm hoping we see a pickup of play in volkov heavies as we see decks that would play volkov heavy like i'm, I'm hoping as people build decks that could play volkov heavy they say you know maybe i should play volkov heavy That being said, we actually do have Volkov heavies in both of these lists. Mm -hmm. Seven copies of Volkov heavy total between them. And we see Gamma Yunes in both lists. A lot a lot going on that I like to see. It, it, it'll be cool to see. This is one of those that you'll get to see if the mono deck is good enough on its own as opposed to opening up the utility that the deck has by playing something else with it. Volkov Heavy all over the field. Yeah, a lot of Volkov heavies at the moment. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, the detain is nice. Just gonna put that back in the hand and continue pushing damage. Gallows Boy is so good. Yeah. Card's fantastic. Both of these decks do play the full play set of Gallows Boy as well. So yeah. both of them helping to boost Gallows Boy up to that most played common spot as we saw a minute ago. Overkill. I don't think we've seen that too much outside of that OTK deck. So yeah. it's kind of cool to see it being played now. Yeah, the art's also really weird. Is it just like him kicking someone in half? No, he's at a urinal. Wait, what? Hang on a minute. Oh, excuse me. He's at a urinal. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Ha! And this guy's got a knife, so maybe he was coming up to mug him while he was uh, <laughs> a bit busy. Uh, yeah. And it didn't go well. No. Uh, Chumzy is confirming in the Twitch chat that Candyland is canon in Mythgard. Wow. Don't troll okay. me like that. Don't yeah, troll me on. like that, Chumzy. I am a huge Candyland fan. <laughs> you're, I mean, you're a huge fan of candy as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, be that as it may. <laughs> Troy Gazette coming down. All hail the Rat King. Or maybe Prince. I don't know. It's got a little crown. Might be a king. Yeah, see, chat's got my back. Liking candy is just... How do you not? And all of our players have shown up for round two. <laughs> Bless. So, uh, Capogio is here. Is playing Chumzy as of right now, I believe. So, uh, that's going to be... Interesting. 
interesting. Yeah, they'll have to get those games in quick because we can't give an extension on that beyond just the 10 minutes when time is called. Yeah, exactly. So it looks like maybe Kapokio didn't notice that this was Swiss this week? I believe it's one of their first times playing in the event. Yeah, so they may just not know much about the Swiss system yet. It's fine. Like like we've discussed, a lot of people come from uh, places where they don't do Swiss. Yeah, I've noticed that within a lot of people, this community uh, specifically. Yeah, a lot of people are like, let's do single elim, double elim. And the only place mm. I know double elim is in fighter tournaments. <laughs> yeah, we might We might do something like that one week just to see how it goes. But I think mostly sticking to Swiss is yeah the way to go. But this being a community event, if the community wants to do something else, let us know. And if it gets enough feedback, we will uh, see what we can do to accommodate it. We've done things like moving the time that the event begins. Mm -hmm. We've actually done a single LM one time way back in the test event a few weeks ago. So it it's not something that will be absolutely dead set on doing it one specific way, yep. at least until the beta comes out, at which point we want to focus on consistency of the event so that people know what to expect when playing in an MWO. Yeah. And that's one of the good parts is we're still in alpha. This game's still in alpha. Just come and have fun. Win some packs. 25 packs for first. And then, uh, you know, another like 77 packs getting dispersed between top 32. It looks like we do have an update on that last match we had been watching uh -huh. between Hazaj and Logic with Logic winning that match by what I can tell Hazaj <laughs> seems to have quite the opinion on the match at the moment oh yeah that's uh <laughs> that's an opinion Duskwing Angel is so good. Duskwing Angel is fantastic. This Gamion's still up to divination. This This is such a good spot to be in. Yep. This is where you want to be. Now choosing to divination and then feast. I actually don't like that myself. I would feast and then divination. It allows you to see more cards. Yeah. Overkill. But if you if you have a position that like you know one specific thing will win you the game, yeah, then definitely divination to see if you can find that thing and then get it off of the feast. Yeah. So like it, it does change somewhat contextually, but I think mostly I would choose to feast and then divination. Hazaz said that they were not a fan of Rush. Is that being said. Logic's deck. Yes. It's, uh, it's all in good fun. Twitch chat the was MWO, asking. though. Yeah. The only people that are allowed to be very salty here are me and Noah. <laughs> and the is ignition going to is going to put it away. Ignition. So that is game one finished. Exactly. With about... 20 minutes to go. Yeah, tons of time still. Yeah. So we'll get you into game two with them as soon as we can. And we'll look to get an update on the other some games of these matches. Well. So the only match that is concluded is Logic beating Hazaj 2-1. Yep.
How do you feel about the sleeves in this game? I, I like Malefishes a lot. Uh, Malefishes look really good. I like the classic look of Argos. Big fan of that. Looks great. Gallus boy coming down. I don't think I've found a combination of sleeves that I didn't like. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. Sometimes. No, I like... take that back. We had those oh, boy. McDonald's sleeves a couple weeks ago. That... Oh, come on. Those looked great. I, <laughs> I don't. I, I, I was not, uh, not a fan. Yeah, I could tell. Yeah, the Heinz condiment. My boy doesn't like red and yellow. <laughs> Unless it's on a burger. I get it. <laughs> Logic's now on a mission to find the ugliest sleeve combination. All right. Let's see it. Ooh. Melpomene Muse. I, I like... I like this Melpomene Muse this week. Typically, I'm not a fan of playing slow X1s mm -hmm. because Bolt is always, always an issue. Mm -hmm. And this week with six Bolts total, that's not a thing. These, these slow X1 minions that have the potential to push damage, but typically would just die out to the Bolt, won't be dying out to the Bolt this week. So yeah. they have the chance to be impactful. Yeah. It's interesting. I like that, though, when, like, the meta shifts a little bit and new cards get the spotlight because people aren't playing, you know, the Tier 1 or S-Tier uh, things. They're they're exploring. They're, they're yeah, checking out I, other I think things. some of that, specifically within this game, is that we don't have that yet. I, I would say that we don't still have a totally fleshed-out meta. Like, we've got... Yeah an idea of the good decks but we've seen those decks evolve weekly and not just small changes too look at Indozoa who had multiple finishes in the semis and finals couldn't quite get the win mm -hmm. made changes to the deck that they'd been playing yeah and came in and won yeah that was was that last week that Indozoa won mm -hmm. Yes. And the Rocky Champion. <laughs> yes. So Wi-Fi Hunter, fellow team. Sometimes not getting complacent with the deck that has shown itself to be the good deck up to this point, and being willing to take chances pays off quite a bit without a heavily established meta. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to explore a little bit. Something's gonna help you pick up that one win that you need. Double Calliope Muse has happened this game. Is this uh, getting to do so much fixing of the top deck? Uh huh. It's so nice. Yeah, it's really, really good. And Malefish is in kind of an odd spot at the moment with having to get the heavy out of the way like that. Mm -hmm. I don't think. I mean, we, we've got quite a bit unknown, so it's possible. But I don't know that Maleficia has a good way to clog up these Calliope Muses. Yeah. Like, this will eat up one block, but... Oh! Okay, so that'll be gone. And no damage going in on this attack, likely. How do you feel about this... The way that Maleficia is effectively kill-spelling these minions by spinning them and just making them vanish it, it, it's such a neat way to yeah. make non-kill spells into kill spells yeah for sure and in a deck that lacks actual solid kill spells i love that you can still find ways to do that 
Yeah, it, it's also really impactful, to be honest. That's gonna Plus, you get a 1 1 body to continue blocking with. Yeah. Heavy is just everywhere. Yeah, a lot of heavies going on. Yeah. What a nice little visual effect. I love being able to make an attack like that and then post combat spend less to kill out the damaged minion. Oh, this is big. Yeah, that's really, really good. Also, I think this might be one of the best looking minions in the game. I, I am a big fan of these big, heavy mech suits and stuff. I, yeah. I, I like the heavy tech looking stuff. A big fan of the look. But it's gone. not actually doing anything except eating up an ignition and getting the heavy off the field and now a beast comes down yeah the beast comes down this is potentially big i was gonna say unless a pack happens which we do see and this list only plays oh no this list does play the full play set of pack we talked a bit a little while ago about most lists only playing two mm -hmm. so potentially having that additional copy is what allowed this to happen you know, you, yeah. you gain a likelihood to have it in hand by playing that last copy and sometimes just the added likelihood of having the last one even if you only plan to cast two is helpful in actually seeing it to yeah. deal with the beast the moment it hits the field Born again coming down. Calliope Muse again. <laughs> yeah, this is a lot of Calliope Muse this game. Yeah. And it's just getting such down to such a life total that it's like you really have to do something. Double overkill, trying to draw into something. Yeah, looking to find an out. Just having to cycle those off. Which, like, that's fine. It, it's... We see Bolt so often because of the same type of uh -huh. ability to just cycle. So, that's mostly why that's being played anyway. But again, shuffling back into the deck and going to continue pushing damage. Jesus, Duskwing Angel. <laughs> my god that's uh yeah what do you do about that like yeah, i think you have to deport it, it. I, yeah i, I think you still take i think that's the five, only like yeah the ideal situation is bouncing the duskwing angel and playing a big impactful minion in that middle lane I just, I don't really know what Melficia could do to get out of this. To port, sure. Bolt. 
smite rather. I just I I think we're in a spot where there's nothing we could really do. Yeah. Uh you take a look at Malefish's list again. We've got now, Malefisha does have quite a few good, impactful minions on the top end mm -hmm. in this deck. But, like, we've seen the beast. We've seen one of the beasts. So, not likely that the second one shows up. Uh -huh. And especially not now that it wouldn't be castable. So, I think... Like, I, oh no, the Infuse still makes this lethal. So, at the moment, even doing this, this is still lethal with the Infuse. Yep. So this needs to be something playable, and it's not, and that'll be game. Yep, that is going to be game. Well played, getting thrown up. And that was 2-0 now? Uh-huh. Yeah. That is the 2-0. That is, in fact, the 2-0. Got about 10 minutes until time is called. Uh-huh. And I think we still have a match going on. Yes, we should. We have Capocchio and Chumsy. Yes. Another, um, I believe this is another dropout match. Potentially, yes. Yes, potential dropout and, match as well. Ooh, Capocchio showing off one of those ten mythics that <laughs> this list plays. This mono blue list. Yeah, that's really bad. It's really, really good, actually. Um, Capocchio submitted this mono blue list with uh, quite the, the deck name. It just says, my GF did this. <laughs> so I don't know if that means that she made the list Capocchio's playing. Huh. If it means she named the deck, uh, we don't have all the specifics we don't we don't that, have the full story there Tokyo got some kind of help this yeah. week giant stairway wow so much damage yep mm, scout coming down but but not enough yeah it's like well because the agile would mean that scout wasn't able to block anyway so Chumsy takes that game. We'll look to get an updated count on this match. I believe that's 1-0 because yeah, this one got going a little late. But we will look into that and see. And we do have the uh, the message in Twitch chat, Pokio letting us know that <laughs> was not uh, <laughs> It's not <laughs> by choice. Was not Capocchio's choice. Yeah, was not a choice. Well, we, was in fact well, we wait on them, forced. While we wait on them to get into this next match, you mind pulling up Capocchio's list and showing it to us? Yeah, give me one. Because second. this is a mono blue list with ten mythics that I am just about positive is the most expensive deck we've had anybody play at the MWO. So. I want to yeah, I don't think we've seen it. Look at it. I don't. I don't think we've seen we it. On them. We've seen a three before in front. Yeah, I think this is. This deck list so we'll is take insane. A quick look at Capocchio's list. This is a lot of mythics. Capocchio kind of choosing to flex on us a bit this week. Oh, Hazaj saying this may not be the most expensive. It might be the second most. Anyway, it is definitely an expensive list. But look at all of those mythics. Yeah, that's nuts. And one of the, the neat things about playing with a high mythic count is it actually means you also play with a high singles count mm -hmm. because you can only play one of each. So it we talked a bit today about the decks that play a lot of ones and two ofs and the utility that gives you mm -hmm. as opposed to the consistency of playing a lot of play sets uh -huh. and that's also shown in this matchup as chumsy plays a lot of play sets and Capocchio has lots of one and two ofs i actually think that that was the i think that was a 2-0 
is what it was that sounds, a 2-0? Was that it? Is what it sounds like. Uh, no orange would be nice, but unfortunately, uh, fortunately, we have to do it this way. Let me see. I'm trying yeah. to get Chumzy to report on Battle 5. I may just need to uh, dump a whole bunch of money and <laughs> flesh out my collection. Yeah. So we are going to be moving into round three. I'm going to be getting them set up, but let's go ahead and talk about the most popular. Hold on. The most popular rares that we have um some new some new people moving into some spots around here yeah. uh fire song prodigy magmatar at six dashing word master at five Stract life earth slide vedma sky ranger at four a piece <laughs> that last slot actually had like five things that all tied Jeez. but there was just no I, way. I couldn't, I couldn't quite fit them all in a way that I liked the layout. So we chose to only show a few. Some of the ones that we haven't seen too much of yet. I don't think I'm too shocked by the left side of this mm -hmm. image too much. Yeah. Uh... The Vedma popping up, I think, is a combination of this lack of blue that we've talked about this week, as well as a big uptick in mono lists. And one of the mono lists plays quite a few of these. So it, it I think it's maybe less indicative of a big shift in play so much as it is indicative of kind of a small event with less blue than we've been used to seeing but it would be cool to see it continue to be in this most played section as it is something that's somewhat new within the mwo scene yeah and let's go ahead and talk about the most popular paths not surprising Eh, I guess one of them is kind of surprising. Yeah. Um, so, Turn of Seasons, Journey of Souls. Rainbow's End. How do you feel about these? I think the one and two slots don't shock me. Yeah, uh, no, not at we've all. We've seen this week in and week out. And I was, a few weeks ago in the test event, I mentioned that I thought a lot of it was due to these two being the easiest to build with yes. and like they just kind of incidentally happen they don't you don't have to change a deck list to fit the play style that they give you mm -hmm. and i think some of that still holds up but i think that i initially thought they would fall off and they haven't. So I think as much as it's a case of ease of play style in using mm -hmm. these, it's also just two good choices, two solid choices. So I, I'm beginning to think that we may not see as much of a shift with these as I initially thought we would. Yeah. And it's it's only time will tell. I mean, maybe they make something that's stupid good in a, like in a Rainbow's End path. But, well... We'll see. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get round three all set up for everyone. Um, thanks for hanging out. Remember, if you guys want to make your own featured card spotlight, let me or Noah know. We are still working on some stuff for the MWO, so uh, we're hoping to bring some high-quality content for everybody. We will be right back with round three.
And we are back with round three. We have MWO veteran Hazaj versus Tritros. I believe I said that one right. I think so. I'll be close enough. Oh, thank God. Um, <laughs> we have Dire Control Standard. We've seen it today against My Axe. Similar, uh, looks to be a pretty similar build. I mean, yeah, now this, this, my axe build is definitely enchantment heavy, and we see that with the path selection as well, mm -hmm. as opposed to just looking to get to the late game, play these big, big minions like Living yeah. Mountain. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a good, it's going to be good. I'm excited. So we'll be getting them in the game in just a moment. All right. Just waiting for them to start up their game. It's pretty exciting. And we did get the MWO 2v2 hype train rolling in the chat. <laughs> yes, um, we did. The, the players from this week's event are very excited to see something like that. Hopefully by the end of the month. Or maybe starting next month. Yeah, sometime in the coming weeks we will be doing the 2v2 event. We, and we just gotta figure I don't it think, out. <laughs> I, don't I don't know think how it'll it's be a work. weekly thing. Like the like like we we won't be doing two weekly events, one of them singles and one of them two v two. But I think maybe once a month we can do a, a two v two event. Exactly. God, people love 2v2. Yes. Yes, they do. I think that one has to be best of one or best of... It can't be best of three. I don't even know how that would yeah, work. No, those games would take too long. It'd we'll, have to be a best of one. We'll <laughs> settle all the lift. details on that in the coming weeks and yeah, we'll figure have it, out. it ready. I don't think we, we will do it until we feel confident that the quality of the event will be up to... MWO standards but it is definitely going to be happening within the next few weeks mm. and I'm excited yeah and as a reminder for everyone we have moved over to this official MWO Twitch channel uh, we do have the MWO YouTube that we are going to be uploading all of the videos up to as well we're still in the process of getting those moved over um, and yeah we're trying to figure out how to get reruns going on this channel once this channel hits affiliate then we could do reruns until then it's kind of stuck on my channel um not stuck but there's no way for me to move them over and do the reruns here so big things coming for mwo especially once me and noah get settled <laughs> right near each other i'm gonna be like yes. 40 minutes away from you now compared to uh, across the united states so that's gonna be a lot of fun too yeah we'll get to at least a, a few times meet up and do the, the full-on casting desk, and that should be fun. Noah's going to be in a suit. I'm going to be in a hoodie. It'll be all great. <laughs> Professionalism. <laughs> We're going to see Wheel come down and just... This Reaver is going to cause a lot of problems. Yes, it is. It's, it's Warded so many Alpha abilities. Strike Frenzy <laughs> Life Tap. <laughs> oh well well there's that something. may help this is going to come down to how many kill spells can be used to keep this thing alive yeah exactly oh well the infuse uh, i guess it doesn't actually matter hmm. yeah the infuse wouldn't uh wouldn't save it yeah oh but that will yep wow and we see the honed edge. I'm guessing this may be the axe that the... Uh... Yeah, my axe. <laughs> yeah, this may be the axe that the deck name was talking about. I aim only to sharpen you. As I would any other weapon. Huh. Is that the face that's hiding in the bushes in Maze? I don't think so. I, I've always thought the face in Maze was supposed to be like possums and stuff, dude. <laughs> Possums. 
yeah. that's what we're going with <laughs> when i was in oh. high school with a little tangent while we watched this game play out when i was oh. in high school uh we had one day that i came home and my mom was like sitting up on the edge of the couch and i was like what's going on and she goes i opened the sink to get some bleach out and we have a possum below the kitchen sink <laughs> So my dad and I had to go in and get this stupid possum. We don't know how it got into the house, oh, but we had God. to get it out. So I imagine that that's what's in Maze. Anytime I see eyeballs and I can't see a body attached, I assume it's a possum. <laughs> Fantastic. Extract life is going to come down and kill the Shatterfist. This uh, Reaver is still going to just stay up and just be causing a whole lot of problems. It's a 5-4 now with Frenzy. Gonna be draining <laughs> ten so each much. turn. Well, and like the life gain too. What do you do now? Oh uh, no! The and another gap. frenzy, demolition speedway unit. <laughs> this Shh. is such a cool deck. Yeah, I'm a real Hang big on. fan. I'm, I'm enjoying this. We gotta talk less about possums so we can focus on this game. Yeah, this is getting really bad. I... Air healing is gonna keep you alive for a lethal. minute. Yeah, it's gonna keep you alive for a minute, but Maybe. if if Tri has another axe, nope. Hazaj is just going to scoop this one out, knowing that the Reaver is going to end up killing him within the next two turns. And this is a bubble match, meaning that winning was, this match yeah. will put you into top cut, and losing this match will eliminate you. Yeah. This is... So this is essentially like the single elimination matches we'll be seeing in top cut, yeah. in that a loss now means you don't you don't continue on. Lost now means you get to go to bed. Sign me up. I'll take the loss. It's only four here. So um, this event is going a lot faster. Yeah, we've got less people, so less games waiting. And it's. I think it also has to do with that adjustment because we've hit time once today Yeah. in a situation that we wouldn't have hit time for another like 20 at all. minutes. Yeah. yeah, we wouldn't have hit time at all until beyond the time that the game actually ended in time yeah so i think the cut down on time has helped as well as the fact that this is a somewhat small event this week as it seems a lot of people had a lot of things going on yeah and all of the champions all of the champions sat out this week yeah no two-time champion will yeah. be happening this week so it's going to continue now that we'll have six events, counting the test event, and six champions. So somebody else, and to these these vets on the MWO scene that have been playing week in and week out, and some of them have made top cut but haven't quite made it to the finals and gotten a win. Yeah. It's the gonna be refreshing. likelihood that that happens, knowing that none of the defending champions will be showing up, has got to make them feel good. Yeah, exactly. It's it's always good to know that you are able to um, step into the role and achieve that. I mean, we saw that with Endo last last week. Yeah, literally just been trying to win, coming in second, coming in second. Getting uh, swept out in the top eight the the week I think it was prior. like second, second, semis, yeah. top eight, semis, and then a yeah. win. I mean, it was... It Endo was... hung out in top cut week in and week out. Yeah, just and trying. finally got that win. Playing a game after game, multiple game, back to back even. Just trying to... Always showing up for the MWO. And those of you who don't know, winning an MWO, you do actually get a special title in the MWO chat. So a little bit of distinction goes with having won an MWO in that you stand out a bit in the chat. We want to acknowledge the MWO champions, and we, exactly. we feel that's one way to help do that. Yeah. And who knows, maybe when we've got enough people with that champion title we could do a champions only event Ooh. Maybe we'll have to set up 2v2 champion now as well yeah we're gonna have to well we're they're gonna be called the tag team champions i'm not calling them 2v2 champions <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna be the tag team champions huh yeah without a doubt you can't stop me on that one 
So the it's gonna NWO be, gonna... tag team champions will be decided sometime in the next in the next few weeks. Yeah, I would love to do like a championship event, something like that. Maybe I think it would be a lot of fun. Yeah, maybe after beta launches, determine yeah, the first could... beta champion. Yeah, that would actually be cool. Because I know, like, when beta launches, we plan to take one week off yeah. simply because collection sizes. We want people to have time to mm -hmm. build some. So we'll take a week off in the Strat beta life launch. coming down. This is not going the way I thought this match would go based off of what we saw before. Maybe yeah. it's just the setup that Tritros had. But... Tritross seems to be in a, a little bit of a situation now. Oh, no. Oh, Buck Buck likes that one. Buck Buck wants to call it the Tag Team Champions, too. So it looks like the, uh, the community has spoken. And yeah. we will be going with Tag Team Champions when we do these 2v2 events. But that's a few weeks off. At the moment, we do still have a game going on. Cataclysm coming down. I'm I'm just saying Ward should not stop your own spells. <laughs> it's so good. What? Absolutely I want, insane. I want to win a game by getting myself up to twelve mana and double cataclysming. I, I want to just have that that additional mana open and out of the blue just twelve damage coming down. Alright, so for the for the 2v2, right? What if somebody was able to do... Both players were up to 12. Ooh. One moment. We just saw a feast to go down to 2 against a smite deck. <laughs> the riskiest play of all time. The, it the, did not pay the, off. The, the punished play of all time. Azaz one, one. takes it back. 1-1. One, one. Oh, no. Zaj said, I didn't stay up just to lose now and is going to try. Is going yeah, Zaj is one of those folks in the MWO scene that stays up late to play, yeah? Yeah. I mean, Hazaj starts streaming at like 4 in the morning their time. I mean. Oh, okay. Night Owl, much like myself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it looks like they've gone into the next game, so we'll get you jumped in and get going on this i'd like to see this my axe deck mm -hmm. do what it did in game one i would as well it was a lot of fun to watch and we'll have to ask if the my axe was actually because of the honed edge i want to see if that was uh, a little call out to one of the tech choices made yeah do we got any updates from other games or no let me double check that. Chumsy has uh, has defeated Argos. Yeah, two zero on that. Malefish is up one zero on Capocchio. Capocchio, excuse Capocchio. me. Capocchio. Yes, Capocchio. And Logic lost game one against Kilimanjaro. Thane coming down could be a problem, could not be a problem, depending on what Tritros plays. So you think with uh, Purple Drop and you think we're going to get a new path or power? I hope so. I, I don't think anybody's really quite speculated on that yet. I, I haven't seen discussion about it, but as I mentioned a little while ago, I've been kind of yeah out of a lot of the community discussion this past week yeah so it may have come up i would love to see it and maybe even not a new one but tweaks to the ones we have yeah i i think i've hit the point that although i don't think smite needs a change because of its own function yeah i'd like to see maybe some playstyle choices involved in that selection you know like yeah maybe some additional bonuses on 
each choice depending on a gameplay element so that we see incentive to play non-smite things yeah i'm i would be big on that it, it's it's weird though because you can't balance smite it's well i've, smite I've seen suggestions a... yeah. in the community like making it deal additional damage so like having giving each of them an option to do one thing and then do something on top of that if the opponent has unspent mana and suggestions like that so like as an example smite dealing one but dealing two if the opponent has unspent uh, mana yeah so i think in that way you can look into it some but i don't think we need a change i'd, I'd like to see a change but I definitely don't think we need a change. Yeah. Um, I think the responding to Twitch chat, which is, like I said, one of the better things that we get to do because we uh, only have public knowledge. Uh, you can't heal for two because if, if you heal your entire board for two, that's busted. Well, uh, that makes that makes everything. We see Hazaj take this 2-1. Yeah. Speaking up. on the two heal thing. You don't want Smite and Mend healing and damaging the same amount because then they offset and it leads to long games in which it's it, it, it's completely mitigated both ways. Mm -hmm. So they kind of offset and stall the game out. Yeah. So one of them needs to <clears throat> hold on less. Logic did it. That is the ugliest card back combination I think I've seen. <laughs> oh no, I've got to find this one moment. Oh no. Logic said that they would do it, and they did it. Oh wow. <laughs> yes. Indeed they have. Oh no. And we'll get an updated game count on this match in just a moment. Um, I think it is 1 0 Logic. I would okay. have to. I'll, I'll have to double check real quick. Sometimes I wish I was just Sweet Spinneret and I could have like eight different hands. Oh wait, did, does Sweet Spinneret not have like eight hands? I don't. Four? Four hands? Kilimanjaro is up one zero over Logic. Yeah, what a... Kudos to you, Logic. You did what you set out to do. <laughs> and I mean, it... It is what it is. Showing off two of those limited time pieces, too, in this sleeve. And, you know, yep. that they won't be coming back, so... They'll get... I think they're getting wiped out, though, so we might see them uh, used again. I, th I thought we kept them. Yeah, I also agree. Buck, it, it was snowing in March here as well. Being from the Midwest. Yeah, same. We got a little bit. Yeah, I'm excited to move towards a rainier, slightly warmer version of Chicago. That seems to be fun. Wings coming down is going Wings to sacrifice, sacrifice the gallows, the gallows boy. boy. I like that play. I like that as Gallows well. Gallows Boy wasn't going to deal with that anyway. Yeah. I like that play a lot. Yeah, Gallows Boy uh, did what he had to do. To herald the pestilence. Oh, no. We've seen this once today, and it was highly effective. Yeah, it was really good. That was that game that went all the way into time, and yeah. what a game that was. Yeah, exactly. Ten to twelve close life point totals. So this still anyone's game. Although with the wings going down, this is looking I, I will say it's looking a little bleak on Logic's side, but we don't know what all Logic may have in hand.
the ignition is going to be used on the minion instead of to the face. That's something we've talked about once tonight is the point in time in which you shift the ignitions to hit face instead. But I like this play a lot, putting yeah, putting on six damage, and that damage wouldn't have gone in quite the same way had the ignition gone face. So definitely a good choice to do that. This is going to... Oh, the Cadejo's big. Oh, now. boy. The Cadejo's huge at this point. Speaking of uh, things people are requesting in Twitch chat, they want Cadejo's banned in 2v2. I don't know if it's if it's up to us to really ban effective minions. Yeah, we'll, we'll <laughs> look into all of that and decide. Yeah, Chumsy's raving about it. This is... I, I just don't know if there's... That'll work. That'll put you kind of out of harm's way. Yeah, you'll be getting the life gain off of the Cadejos and then the men. Yeah, so that'll put you at five. It's looking good. Yeah, now even a top deck ignition won't get the game. So I, I'd like to see this happen, but I don't see how Logic wins the game at this point. And it's not that I'd like to see it happen because I specifically want Logic to win. I like watching when someone's in this kind of disadvantage and finds a way to win the game. It, it, it's a good showcase of high-level play when you can find the multi-step solution to get you the game, and I enjoy seeing that. But Logic but has declared, I give up. Kilimanjaro is going to take... This 2-0, which I believe is going to put us ready for top four. Was that the last of the games? No. No, okay. Cap and Mephishia are going at it right now. Um, I don't awesome. have a score on this one. It is 1-1 Maleficia and Capocchio as the Tied. last game still going on in Swiss today. Tied. There we go. And it looks like we've got a lot of game to play, so this should be fun. Yeah. I think this is two of the mono lists. Let me pull these lists up and double check that, but I'm almost positive it is. Let's see. Capocchio, I know, is on a mono list, and Maleficia... Should be? Yeah. Yes. This is two monolists going at it. With a... Like a 25,000 essence gap between them. <laughs> as we chose... You know, as we talked about, Capocchio... Being uh, influenced a bit, if you will, in deck selection this week. Yeah. <laughs> but definitely choosing to flex a bit with all of these mythics. Yeah. And um, I actually don't believe either of these wins will determine anybody's position in the top four. I believe, double check standings. I believe we already have our top four selected. Yes, indeed we do. Our so top these four will not be affecting that. But our top four right now is Kilimanjaro, Logic, Hazaj, and Chumzy. All vets of the MWO That's making it to the semifinals this ready. week. Ready. And one thing we will be doing this week, due to the small size of this event and leading to not showing quite as much in Swiss as we want, mm -hmm. is both of these semifinal matchups will be shown on Twitch. So they will not be played simultaneously. And we will show you both semifinal matches and then the finals match. Yep. That's hype. And we'll begin with Hazaj and Chumsy. Mm -hmm. Into that. It's not quite time yet, as we still need to finish out this Swiss. But we will begin with Hazaj and Chumsy. 
in a semifinals match, and then we will show the second semis. This is something I've wanted to do, the casting of both semis matches, but due to time limits most weeks, yep. <laughs> we, we haven't been able to do it. So I, I'm excited to do it this week. Yeah, I know somebody would try to try to fight us if if we tried to do it. Any yeah, and we week. don't want to take up the whole day doing this. You know, we we get that people have things to do besides playing in the MWO all weekend, and that's that's totally acceptable. Um, we're we're gonna wait to determine pairings. Um, it should make out that way oh no it won't be that way i don't think because that was my mistake i was looking just based on standings but i think it will actually be logic and hazaj i think so it is gonna be logic hazaj yeah I, Jaro, I spoke a little too soon my my bad apologies on that but so definitely wasn't meaning to confuse anyone we will absolutely know by the end of this match when battlefy updates but until then, it was speculation on my behalf, and I apologize about the confusion. If Maficia has a way to pump this Venma Sky Ranger, game's over. Yeah, any damage boost would have done it. Volkov Heavy is going to... How do you feel about giving up the Gallows Boy to smite that? Like, you couldn't play the Gallows Boy down, but I think I would have liked to have had the minion in hand. This does show lethal, which just holding Gallows Boy wouldn't have, but it's, I don't know. I just don't know that I'd like giving up my minion in that situation. I don't know. I don't think it's going to pay off. I think you needed to have the Gallows Boy out there. Yeah, well, the Gallows Boy wasn't castable, so I get it in that aspect, but... yeah. I don't, I don't know. I think I would have held that myself. Then again, we've talked many times about why I'm casting and not playing. So yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Raid the tombs is going to be useful. Um. But I mean, you essentially have to block a bunch of damage and then overkill. Hmm. So Smite will go to one on Kapokyo. And this is the final game of this match. This is 1-1. One, one. Mm -hmm. gonna fan these minions out put damage potential on all sides of the field mm -hmm. and the issue now though is this Volkov heavy you kind of like have to put something big on it because it only needs to push in one damage to have the smite be lethal yep Brecky Scout sacrificing does work. This was well done getting navigating that and getting the heavy off the field. Yeah. This was good play by Kapokio. Smite to one. Wow, this is going to be close. I don't know that Kapokio pulls this off. Let's see, Ice Spike on the Gallows Boy attack five might doesn't do it. Man, I don't know that Kapokyo has a way to, to do this in this. I don't think Kapokyo has any way to gain life as well, so you can't gain out of the yep. smite. Yeah, 
in all likelihood, this is the the game. Yeah. Good game, though. Very good game. Pokio coming out new to the MWOC. Putting up a good showing. A lot of, a lot of good play out of yeah. Pokio. And definitely hope to seek Pokio back again when we come back in two weeks. Yeah, tons of great players this week. Tons of great games in Swiss. But we have our top four. So we're going to go ahead and get them all squared away. Once again, the standings are going to be... Oh, with these semifinal games not being simultaneous, how does it... How do you think it feels to win and then watch the next semifinal? Just taking in as much info as you can about oh god it's... both people because you, like you know you'll be playing one of them next, yeah, and exactly. it is open list, so it's not like you'll be watching to see what they play as much as watching to see how they play it. And that's some deep thought. I like that. You also have that. That bit of anxiety, though, as you have that downtime between coming off a hot win, moving into the finals, and then actually playing the finals. So, a lot potentially going on yeah. with the semifinalists, depending on how all of these semifinal matches play out. Yeah, it's going to be pretty... I, I don't know. I always hated that whenever I'd be at like a big tournament somewhere, and I know... That it's oh, you haven't made semifinals. Come on. Oh, my. Okay, buddy. Calm down. <laughs> Talking about losers bracket. All right. Knowing, <laughs> knowing exactly who I'm going to be playing next. I'm always winning in because I'm yeah. always one win off the elimination. <laughs> Jeez. All right. So I'm going to generate this bracket. And while we do all of this, uh, we I honestly don't think we're going to have to take a delay here um, or a wait. Uh, because we got some most popular powers to talk about. Smite. I'd hate to spoil it, but I Infused. bet Smite's at the top. <laughs> Mend. Obviously, always, always Smite. Yeah, Smite's always been at the top. Smite's too slow. Now, Infuse, we, we had seen Infuse kind of fight to lock up this second slot. And this week, with the count being 2-1 to one between the Infuse and Mend, I wouldn't say that it solidified it. But we have seen Infuse kind of tend to be that second choice. You know, if it's not Smite, it's typically Infuse. And then Mend was just the one, and, like, this is all eight choices this week making it into this stat. So it... Nothing else was played, but I don't think that was because of how good any of these is so much as it was just less people playing. We tend, when we have enough people, we, we tend to see most, if not all, selections seeing at least one pick, and I like seeing that. All right, and we actually are going to be taking a um, about two to three minute uh break really quick while i get everything else um, updated so we are going to be back in two or three minutes with your first semi-final match kilimanjaro currently undefeated in the swiss against chumsy don't go anywhere we will be right back
All right, and we are back with our top four semi final for this I'm week. Excited. For this week's Mythgard Weekly Open. We have veteran of Mythgard in general, Kilimanjaro, versus veteran of Mythgard in general as well, Chumsy. Both, you see them on the Discord, they're hanging out. Kilimanjaro's Team Aloha. Chumsy, card creator captain. <laughs> yes, indeed. I've quite enjoyed seeing those. I'm excited as heck one thing to get these going. I, one thing I'd like to talk about while we have the deck list images pulled up is in what seems to kind of be the theme of the day as we've seen these matchups, I, and maybe it's just lucky placement in Swiss, who knows, but again, we see what I've talked about a few times now with the consistency of the playset heavy list in Chumsy. Yep. As opposed to the ones and twos and, you know, the utility that that gives you. Yep. And we see that again now in the semifinals matchup. And it, it's been kind of neat to see that I mentioned it way back at the beginning of today. And then it's come up multiple times since that we see this kind of clash of styles, if you will. Yeah. So let's go ahead and get our top four all set up and get them going. All right. We're just waiting for them to start up. So, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm really excited. This is this should be a great finals semifinals finals yeah this this top cut top. is full of mwo vet yeah this top four is gonna be sick chumsy changed the card back ready Mix to show a bit ready to show dominance in this top four chumsy yeah, uh think, go ahead do you think anyone has metagamed the event enough to change sleeves each time in case like if, if they get shown by us Mm -hmm. And then someone who maybe doesn't think to check the deck list, but just makes note of the opponent's sleeves. Okay, this was on such and such deck. Oh, get Switching out of here. Switching the sleeves each match. Do you think anyone's gone quite that meta with it yet? No, but there was a point in my life when I played uh, real card games in, like, IRL. Um, yeah. I would change my sleeves in between each uh, each round. I had two sets of sleeves I would switch between because I thought that if uh, I didn't like the way they felt. So yeah. I could do that in Mythgard too. Just change change in between each round really quickly and just change sleeves. It's definitely something like, eh, probably shouldn't do that. That's a huge waste of time, but I could see it. We did see <laughs> the visibility issue with the sleeves that Chumsy has. If you use just the sleeve by itself, mm -hmm. we had someone complain about on mobile, it was tough to tell the opponent's hand size at a glance. Yeah. So we've had some metagaming going on with sleeve choice. I, it would be neat to find out if anyone has switched match to match just to attempt to... Uh, confuse someone by changing sleeve seeing a pretty basic turn basic couple first turns uh we're gonna see yeah now keep in mind yep that iron flesh performer is just gonna charge through there because everyone it has armor one that means you can't bolt it. Indeed. In fact, the most viewed Twitch clip to this game, like if you go to the Twitch section on, like the game section in Twitch, you can cycle to clips by all time. The Stop. most viewed clip of all time Stop. is that one of you bolting one of these. Stop. Yeah, there's uh, there's some good clips in there. Um, but nobody needs to bring that up. All right. Ooh, 
we might need to do once once we move into beta maybe look back at the most viewed clips on twitch in like the alpha phase mm -hmm. oh you want me to make a montage video do like a <laughs> an mwo send off to the alpha twitch clip compilation i like that we'll look into that it'll that have the friends theme song playing with it <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about uh, Panic Raider? Dude's creepy. It is. It's it's thing thing. A it, lot of the it's... a lot of the stuff in this game. I look at it and I'm like, you know, it's just a bit unsettling. Yeah. I like seeing it see play though because I do think it's good, but it's so difficult to play outside of these mono decks because it has such a steep gem cost. Yeah, sorry, Nightbot's uh I'll Nightbot's be toning not down so, Nightbot. Nightbot's not so today. nice. Yeah, Nightbot, we added it into this channel, but I didn't take the time to set up all of its uh sensitivity settings, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> so Nightbot's a bit slap happy at the moment, and we'll get that fixed. I have a really good facial reaction to that one, too. That's uh, high-quality memes right there. But you want to know what armor doesn't save against? Blight. We do see the Zolia again. I'm a big fan of this minion. Yeah, there's uh, some interesting lore uh, theories with Zolia, oh, which yeah? I'm really into. Yeah. But I'll save that for when we have Manted Man. Yeah, we'll get Manted Man on cast one week. Yeah. If you guys are unfamiliar with Manta Man, he's a very popular uh, pillar in other card games for lore and for casting. So uh, he's, he's also taking a liking to this game. Yeah, so. he's also one of our uh, very close uh, associates, friend. I mean, at this point, he's one of our buddies. So he's going to be hanging on and cast. He, does, he helps with a lot of uh, the MWO stuff. So you guys will be able to hear his s smooth, elegant voice at some point that was my attempt at his voice but it is what it is oh no oh to no, heaven and back. no. The saddest thing in the game i can't oh please i don't need this man i have to ban this in a couple weeks oh it's so sad he's just sitting there waiting oh now, to talk about what was said in chat just now, we have had Nightbot ban someone. Nightbot banned someone last week, and I had to <laughs> ban them nice and quickly. <laughs> Nightbot said, um, no. That's wild, dude. Nightbot. Yeah, Nightbot's a bit too feisty at the moment. So yeah, Nightbot's. We'll, uh... we'll put it in check. <laughs> yeah. I think there's just so much value in both of these decks that like definitely yeah chumsy with the well played yeah it's gonna be tough to, to stop this with the ignition showing like if that's also an ignition in chumsy's hand it's just though you can't stop because double ignition smite yeah. ends the game but uh kilimanjaro might be able to gain some life back here We'll need to see a one-cost minion in hand unless something goes back to also play a two-cost minion. Because to get out of that double ignition smite I was talking about, you'll need to be at seven. So we'll need yeah. to see two life gained off of the Kadejo. Yeah. Chumsy, not value, value. I meant value as in there's a ton of cards they all cost low, but they do certain things. So we are like, it's, it, this isn't value. So now do we see? Daring. That'll do. That will do. It's essentially an ignition. And had the ignition too. Had the second wow. one. Chumsy said, I am no house elf avatar. So that is game one to Chumsy.
So you helped Chumsy pick out this week's deck name, yes? Yeah, Chumsy is a... What's, what's up with that? Chumsy is a huge, huge, huge David Bowie fan. And okay. uh, he was saying that this deck takes galaxy brains to play. And um, one of David <laughs> Bowie's lyrics characters is Major Tom, who's kind of stuck in space. Yes. And so I made the reference, and Chumsy loved it. It looks like we've got game two going now. And this is 1-0. We'll get that count updated in just a moment. I have to type very quietly, or else you guys just hear a loud clacking. So I have to do it when, yeah, <laughs> when, when the timing's updating right. updating that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Chumsy is a David Bowie fan. Who, when? I, I didn't know that. <laughs> And again, we see the maze all the way on the left. A move that people should should know now why that's It's the being optimal done. play. It is. <laughs> on the off chance we have someone in chat who doesn't quite know why you continue to see these mazes on the end lanes, to quickly sum it up, you give only two lanes of opposition, so the opponent has less chances to attack that maze. And it also is immobile, which means that if you play it on an inside lane, you can't move it, so you can't move minions past it as well. And so you want to keep it out of the way on the sides in an attempt to not block minion movements in the middle of the lanes. It's, it's just the best positioning for the card. And Noah's got stats on it if you want to see them. <laughs> I've got... So many. I've got a Google Doc that I keep all of my little tangents in so that if I want to flesh one of them out and post some actual content on the idea behind it, I can yeah. do so. And that, that that Google Doc's full of like half sentences as I make mental notes to myself. It's uh -huh. like just enough that I know what I'm talking about if I look at it. Yeah. And it would make absolutely no sense to anybody else. Yeah, but if for whatever reason somebody has to go through your Google Doc, they're just like, uh, what? Yeah. <laughs> Might as well be a shopping list in a language they don't know. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles gonna go pretty uncontested in this middle lane. He's a turtle, right? We need TMNT Cannon and this to be like a cousin. He, he's a turtle though, right? I think so. I, I would definitely say... Uh, Turtle-esque. Yeah. You see the tail, the shell. Like, what else? The, the shell's what sells me on it. It's gotta be. It has to be. If it's not... Well, you got me, then. Trapeze is gonna allow it to swing in uncontested. And draw one card, replacing itself, giving a great value. Parry at the gates yeah, is going to fall. It's an enchantment we've seen a lot of this week, and I hope we continue to see that. Yeah, it's a really good card. I think Super Agile is an ability that just hasn't quite been shown off enough yeah. in the MWO scene. Plus, like, Oof. who doesn't want to see the disembodied head? Yeah, right. Apparently, Logic does not want to see the disembodied head. Oh, come on. You know, Logic's got to gotta get ready for their game. Yeah, like... Logic's out here. Same Since way we've got Logic in chat, I'm going to take a minute as this game is in a bit of a lull. I seem to have bugged and need to back out anyway. Um... <laughs> How do you go into this logic, like, knowing that you'll need to not only stay focused on the game you have ahead of you, but keep an eye on these two as they play this match out? How, what, Give us some what's the, uh, the headspace like in, yeah. at this moment? Shadow Trapeze is going to come down and is going to allow for Firesong Prodigy to swing in. 
Chumsy is in a very good position right now. But so is Kilimanjaro. Kilimanjaro has, uh, quick count, nine cards in hand. Yeah, that's, that's a lot. Uh, oh. Logic says, I make the blood sacrifice to RN Jesus <laughs> and pray to go first, <laughs> just like every other game. Okay. I mean... Same old, same old. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. Zergian Saboteur. Now, with Chumsy also active in the chat today, should Chumsy win this, I'd like to get some feedback on the headspace involved in Chumsy's position of watching this next match, knowing that you'll be in the finals and the match that you'll be spectating decides who you'll be playing. Yeah. And we do see Logic expanding a little bit on the philosophy involved at the moment. Just kind of taking it chill, just not getting wound up about it, not getting uptight. And, like, this is a fun event. It's a community event. It's not, you know, we don't have a thousand bucks on the line and people needing to stay absolutely, totally focused. And that is one thing I've liked about these events is the amount of companionship we see yeah. amongst the people playing. Yeah, which is always really good. Chumsy looking to close this game out. Mm -hmm. This will be a 2-0, yes? Chumsy's up at the moment? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Chumsy looking to finish this semifinals match decisively, swiftly, with this 2-0 win. We'll see if, if that's what happens. Probably would feel really good if it was. Chumsy with the well played. Do you think maybe that's an indication of an ignition in hand? Could be. Might we see? Because like even the mend wouldn't have gotten out of lethal with an ignition. Mm -hmm. Wing. Okay, wings will do too. Wings. Oh will, wow! In fact, A lot of damage in do hand. Do it as well. So that is two zero to Chumsy. Coming in with one of the budget decks of the week and now making the finals, which, again, is kind of a theme of the MWO, it seems, that we, yeah. we continue to have these successful budget decks. And that does mean that we have Logic and Hazaj next, yes? It does, in fact. And we won't be having a gap between those? Nope. They can go we'll ahead and start that it. up. Uh, I'm assuming they can hear me, that is. Yeah, we should post in the chat. And we'll get Logic and Hazaj going in what should be a good semifinals matchup. We'll get those decks pulled up as well. I'm looking at both lists now as we get things settled, and again, it, it's kind of neat. We see what I was just talking about with that showing of the consistency in high play set counts, as opposed to the utility in a lot of ones and two ofs, and we do see that a bit. Not quite as much as the last matchup, but we do see that a little bit now in these two decks as well. We'll get you a quick look at those and then get you into the game. Uh, during the break of their game. I lied. Run. We'll show you those at the end of the match. At the moment, though. They yeah, they, they immediately jumped into, into the it. Action. 
Yeah, they immediately jumped into it. <laughs> Logic's still on those ugly sleeves. Hey, I mean, they're pretty good. I really like these Rhino Symbol ones. To be honest, big fan. Now, I'm looking at the essence cost of these two decks, and outside of the 50 essence in one of the the commons in this deck, Hazaja's deck would actually be exactly twice the essence cost of Logic's. So it's just slightly above twice the cost. When we look at, you know, Logic's playing one Mythic, and Hazaja's playing like five, I think. Mm -hmm. So we do see a bit of a gap in the cost. And it, it the last semifinals match was the same way. The yeah. list that was playing a lot of the play sets of the commons and uncommons mm -hmm. was obviously the cheapest, but it was, again, the one that was playing the most of those play sets. And so we see the utility come in as the mythic count goes up. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of been the theme of the day. And should Hizaj win this, that will also show in the finals. Yeah. But if Logic wins this, then we'll have the two budget decks with the high playset totals. And that would be cool to see, too. Yeah, that would be really sick to see. Also, Logic's deck, playstyle-wise, is a lot like Chumsy. And we would have a fast finals, which should be a lot of action. That would be a fun to watch. All right, five-minute finals, let's go. It's <laughs> yeah, it, basically. Yeah, that'd be uh, crazy. Chumsy giving us a bit of context on the deck choice that they made this week. Talking about the life changes that happened a few weeks ago. You know, the mm -hmm. life going up to 25 instead of 20. The... Uh, Chumsy's deck is budget and well suited to people new to the game and so Chumsy chose to showcase that the deck is not just good because it's cheap but good because it can compete and even just making the finals should Chumsy not win this week I would say that's still a, a successful week in accomplishing that goal Yeah, we do see the ice spike now on the abyssal Thane is going to take care of the Gallows boy. Yeah, this is just kind of that setup stage of the game. This is one thing I like about the game so much is until we get to five to six mana in most decks, this is a lot of I'll play one, maybe two things, and then my opponent's going to play one thing and kill one of mine. And it's, it's just a lot of jockeying to set up positions mm -hmm. on the field. And Yeah, for sure. It's it's a lot of fun to watch. Crimson Pack is going to take out Avenging Alpha. But Air Healing is going to kind of negate that. That's something else that I like so much about this, this deck is that you get to have the healing to offset the Pact. And that comes in quite handy. And we do see in Hazaj's list, as we talked about a while ago, two packed, which is what most people have chosen to play. Uh, we also see two packed in Logic's list. Mm -hmm. But packed being in that bundle with Calliope Muse and Feast to the most uh, the most played common uh, in commons, almost weekly now, like. I know it was at least each of the last two weeks in today that we had those exact same mm -hmm. uncommons. Fire Song Prodigy is not going to be able to do it by itself. Yeah, this, this is one years. of those field feels bad moments this specific setup is one we see a lot we do see the pact did 
but the two two and then the ignition going into the Calliope Muse, it feels bad giving up both of those to take this out. So the pact definitely does that and still allows the two two to stay. Yeah, for sure. Magmatar's good. Yes, it is. That's a very good card. Zosh down to 10, though. Needs to kind of look out now as Logic will look to close this game out, but we do see some healing. Looks like Logic just weighing the options at this yeah, point. Yeah, just trying to determine what's going to be the most effective without, I don't want to say risking, but potentially having an outcome that does not seem favorable. Yeah. And at, at this point, Logic's still sitting on 25 life. If it takes a little bit to find the combination oh! of pieces to get lethal, that's fine because logic can take the hit although maybe not now because 18 damage was added to the field as i said that yeah wings coming down oh there it is yeah see wings opens up the lane due to the agile mm -hmm. so wings pushing in with the agile allowing the lethal and logic takes game one perfect Let's go ahead and get that updated over here. And then we will jump right into game. Logic leads 1-0. Mythgard Weekly Open, Week 5, Top 4. And again, we will show these two lists side by side following the conclusion of this match. We didn't have a gap in between it and the last in which to pull that up. So mm -hmm. we will show you the two lists side by side following the conclusion of this match. Yes. And then we can do the Mythic Talk. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go into Finals. Yeah, we'll take a couple minutes show some spotlight images move into the finals and look to close this out in what will be the quickest mwo by date. far by far except maybe the test event eh, yeah yeah the useless. test event the test event might have been uh might have been a little bit quicker yeah the, the test event was single a limb it was not a swiss event so but it also wasn't a, a weekly open so this is definitely the quickest weekly open Which, I mean, hey, still giving out, oh, God, let's see, how many packs is that still? Yeah, just by playing this week, you'll get the top eight incentive, essentially. First place, 25 packs. Second place, 15, third, 10, fourth, seven, fifth through eighth, four packs. So even for just showing up and playing, people are going to walk away with a minimum of four packs. Somebody's going to walk away with 25 packs. That's a, that's a huge collection increase. Yeah. It, you know what I mean? I think that the people who have been playing week in and week out we see some of the benefits of the packs that they win as we see these decks evolve and yes it, it's cool to see that For we sure. saw it specifically back in the second week when we had someone win the event in like the fifth day that they'd been playing so they didn't have much of a collection yeah and then came back and made top cut the next week with 
a list a lot like what they had won on the last yep. week, but with added mythics. Yeah, for sure. The Avenging Alpha coming down as a 6 6 is big. Mythics is what we care about. Faded Firebird. Such a good minion. Yeah, this very, is something that hadn't seen card. much play until Endozoa began playing it a few weeks ago at the yeah. MWO. Yeah. Though, I shouldn't say hadn't seen much. I hadn't seen much of it. I don't know if it was showing <laughs> up and yeah. I just wasn't seeing it. But within the MWO specifically, it wasn't seeing play until... And Dezoa showed it off a few weeks ago, and now we've seen it pick up quite a bit, as it's just so difficult to actually deal with. Yeah, it is not uh, that easy to deal with at all. So you think when you get moved out close to me and we end up setting up a casting desk, you think we'll have enough space to put all the like the displays and stuff? Because I don't know about you, but I've got two laptops and each of them's hooked to a TV as well. And big I mean, yikes! All of the space I have. No, we'll we'll have to see. I think uh, we might need to reorganize uh, the living areas a little bit, but it shouldn't be that bad. <laughs> Should not be that bad. I'm super excited. Yeah, I we'll we'll make do. It'll be a lot of fun, and we'll get one of those flying cameras. Not having to depend on a voice chat application to keep the audio will be nice, because then we won't have issues of someone cutting out because the call quality went down. Uh huh. Yeah, it'd just be real bad. I uh I noticed that a couple times when like I'll be saying something or you'll be saying something and it'll be like eh and I'll be like ah oh, if only you were next to me yeah who knows we might even set up a little uh OBS scene with the two of us sitting at a fake desk and show that the whole time <laughs> oh! that's uh that's one of my favorites <laughs> do like a little fake desk. Have some duct tape ties on. Yeah. Get it looking all nice and fancy. Official is the correct word. Nice and official. <laughs> Hazaj. Beside the MWO Tag Team Champions. Hazaj taking five on that attack. It's really big. This game is... So much damage coming out of Logic's list. I'm going to enjoy the finals if it comes down to Chumsy and Logic. I'll enjoy it both ways. But the playstyle of Chumsy's deck is so much like Logic's that it's going to be such a fast-paced game. That if, if that's what it comes to. Hyperborean is going to be a big problem. Yes, it is. Until... Until we get to that finals, Logic has the obstacle of a big 6-8 to deal with instead. And it looks like the game plan is going to be to just not contest it. Mm -hmm. Logic's got the advantage on life at the moment, although the Lamia's Kiss completely stops that. And yes. now Logic absolutely needs to find a way to deal with this. And we've seen one pack used, so Logic only has one pack to out that with. And I think that pack is the only way of dealing with it in this list. So Logic's absolutely going to need to find a pact 
to get out of this, I think. Unless you just look to... Oh, you know, you can't even... Nope. No, you could... You, you can't deal with it well in combat is the issue. Like, this is going to be tough. You're technically putting out more damage than it can heal for. The issue, though, is the damage you take along the way. At the moment, Hazaj actually does outclock logic, especially now. The fact that you do out damage the heal at the time that you said that would help, but you don't out damage it fast enough to not die just off the damage you take in doing so. Yeah. Logic. In a tough spot. Yeah, Hazaj. Hazaj coming finding, back. Yeah, finding the comeback in the Lamia's Kiss Life game just being so clutch. So that will put us at 1 1, yes? Yes. It is tied. And one, so Chumsy's suspense continues. Chumsy. Ready and waiting for the other finalist of this week's MWO. Lots of good starts here from both players. Yeah, definitely. Shadow Trapeze, Lore Broker. The Gallows boy's going to sit opposite that. We won't be seeing it get packed in now as the second blue was made instead. The Agile so nice in that situation, being able to push the damage instead of just having to take the Calliope. Like, would he just see a smite and a pass? Oh, a heal and a pass. That'll do just as well. Having the out to the Avenging Alpha the moment yep. it hit the field because of the season change, that was... Can't write that. <laughs> yeah, that, that, wow. Man. And we saw last game, Hazaj finish with so much life having been gained, and now at a good amount... In, you see, 12 has been gained. Mm -hmm. There's so much life gain in this list, actually, because of that, that Lamia's kiss, which is just the one copy of. We do see, I think anytime we've seen the Lamia's kiss played in the MWO, it's been a one of. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's such a good card. Crimson Pact! No. Logic looking to stay alive here. Hyperborean.
Yeah, this is... Again, one pack down means just one pack is left. And... Logic definitely hoping to find that pact quickly. Yeah. Now, if you have a minion to play on the follow-up, how do you feel about attacking the 2-2 two -two into the 6-8 to put damage out, and then playing a minion in that lane hoping they don't have a kill spell to take it out? Do you feel like the odds of Hazaj having a kill spell would be too high to... Yeah. ...to do that? Because, like, the way you'll kill that if you don't pact it is by chipping it out and damage. I think I may have attacked in and then played the Gallows Boy in that lane. Yeah. This is stressful. It is. This is a, a close game. And this is 1-1 in semifinals. Like, this is the time to find a solution to the field and win the game. You know, mm -hmm. get into the finals in the MWO. And Lo Logic and Hazaj have both played in enough of these events now that winning one would, would be... A nice way to complete the saga if you will you know and, and playing week in and week out and finally finally getting that champion title i just noticed fire song prodigy's playing a harp yes I'm the best. I was like, <laughs> why does it have a harp noise? Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. wheel <laughs> this is on the difficult field to deal with keeps on turning crimson packed so now between the season change and the pact the life gap was just mitigated by seven just now i like this play while the season still allows the damage to go in mm -hmm. getting the big minion off the field what a top deck. Feast there is wow. risky. It's a risky feast. I mean, it is, but at the same time, what would you have liked top deck in that situation instead? I think feast is about the best top deck in yeah. that spot. Uh, that's a good one. Yeah, it is. This is going to be close. Does Hazaj have the out now? Does Hazaj play... Hazaj plays Cataclysms. Could we see the Cataclysm tie? Magmazar. Nope, it's not going to happen. I was going to say the Smite Cataclysm would die. Ignition. Ignition. Double ignition. Smite Logic. Lethal. Chumsy. Our final... For this week's MWO. We will get Logic and Hazaj pulled up, decklist pulled up side by side in just a moment and take a quick look at those. What a... What a game. There we go. We got those up. Yeah, so this is what we just saw play out. And as I talked about, we do see that consistency in the play sets as opposed to the utility in the ones and two of. And 
it's been fun to see that basically all day long until this finals match now in which we have Hazaj and Chumzy who both excuse me we have Logic and Chumzy who both play lots of play sets and it's two somewhat budget decks that have play styles that match up a lot so that'll be fun to look at and talk a bit about as we go into that finals match but I don't think it's quite that time yet no it is not we do have the most popular mythics to bring up as well Go ahead and get those brought up. Yeah, the mythic sheet this week was kind of cool. We have Magnus for two, Bragi for two, and then Living Mountain for two. Yeah, usually I bunch these and then show something else. But today, each of these had two, and then all of the mythics besides this, it was all one of, and it was like 12 of them. So I'm like, well, just we'll just show the two ofs and let that be the whole sheet because i couldn't add images of all of the one ofs yeah exactly there's no way to do all that and i don't think this is too shocking outside of the living mountain which i think is a case of we had a couple people show up with living mountain and we had a lot of people not show up so i think that was i don't suspect that living mountain is something we'll see continue to show up in these mythic sheets as the weeks go on but we'll have to wait and see all right and uh we're gonna go ahead and just jump right into it i think so we'll take a quick minute to look at the deck lists and then we will get them going. All right, everybody, start your timers. Place your bets in the chat. Now, for how long you think this, this rush, essentially, mirror almost is going to take? So we'll take a quick look at these lists as Logic and Chumsy get settled in and they need a minute to get this game going. So we can get the list pulled up and we do see the lists come in somewhat close in cost. Chumsy's is a few thousand less, but mm -hmm. that's that's not too much in this game. Yeah. You know, it, it, I would say both of these definitely class as budget decks. And I think it'll be fun to see because they have the same game plan and win and win fast. Mm -hmm. So it'll be fun to see how it plays out when we look at Logic's list that chose to expand upon that game plan by adding in something, flashing in something. And if the options that that gives Logic will be enough to deal with the absolute speed of Chumsy's deck. Yeah. I'm really excited. This is going to be fantastic. We do have Hazaj and Kilimanjaro playing for third. So they're doing that. Let's go ahead and once they are ready, we can begin. Yeah, as soon as they begin the game, we'll jump in and get you into this finals match. Finals! Mythgard Weekly Open Week 5. We do want to thank you, our lovely viewers, and our lovely players as well. Thank you guys so much for hanging out each week, coming in here, bringing your best, and hanging and out. It looks like the game is on. Chumsy won the... The ability to be on the play this game logic going second yeah and that can often be quite decisive in a matchup like this yep so this should be fun to watch famous card game player said i'd rather be lucky than skilled and i believe that is a comparative when going first two two Burning the Ignition, Daring Trapezist, 
Trapezist? I think I yes. said that right. Yes. Panic Raider in Iron Flesh Performer dying to the Daring Trapezist. This is the fastest game of all time. <laughs> this is going to be a quick finals. I yeah. To time out this finals, we'll post a stat on it sometime in the next couple of days when I get to it. But I'm going to go back and look at the finals and all of the events, how long they took, and see if this actually is not only match up with, but if so, by how much. Yeah. And we'll do that by looking at the time each game took as opposed to the total match time so that it's not going to be swayed by a 2-0 because I think we've had a couple 2-0s in finals. Vedma Sky Ranger going to get put to into the deck. I was about to say to the bottom. Not necessarily. This is so mean. They're harassing this little hatchling. I haven't looked at this one. Let me see. If that kid hits that hatchling, I'm going to Rhino's headquarters. <laughs> Starting a protest. I won't camp outside with a sign that says stop the violence. <laughs> yeah. yeah the... Makes me think of one of the old Tony Hawk video games had a, <laughs> a little scene set up with people who wanted to speak out against violence against sheep. And Jeez. one of the chants that they used was stop the woolly bully. <laughs> and it's always stuck with me. I played it as a kid, and it's just always stuck with me. Stop the woolly bully. Look at this guy. That's so sad. But I think this hatchling's about to kill this vampire, so I guess it's worth it. If it doesn't kill these kids, one of the two's <laughs> about to happen. <laughs> yeah. But my Sky Ranger getting shoveled back in again. Just not seeing a use for that minion right now. Gallows Boy. Ignition Hatchling is going to stay safe and alive. And dealing Logic, three. although going second, is still in this game. Mm -hmm. This is still anyone's game. And the Calliope Mew is getting to attack past the Gallows Boy is big. Yep. An uncontested side of the board it needs to change. That is not going to suit well. Chumsy throwing up the well played. But does Logic have a Magmatar? Nope, a Panic Raider. Ooh. Uh, ignition. To Chumsy. Back to something you said just a moment ago. I don't think Logic plays the cow, so not like. Oh that, well, then. That he'd be topping it. Well then. And we do see game one go to Chumsy, kind of indicative. Of what we talked about at the beginning with that being on the play advantage in this matchup. Yeah, and unfortunately, I don't think we're ever gonna have the ability to decide who goes uh, who goes first and who goes second. So. Yeah, the only way to do that is to have them continue to play until they luck into how they wanted it to be set up. And that's just time consuming. So it's yeah. not going to be something that we'll be doing in the MWO, but it is what it is. Chumsy again on the play this game. I think the only like real way around that would maybe be a best of five. Ignition is going to take out that iron flesh performer getting around the armor one. Yeah. That'll do it. Bolt won't, but Ignition will. Yes, for sure.
so with this being 1-0 now, we'll get the game count updated in just a moment. How do you how do you feel knowing we'll be seeing a new MWO champion within the next I don't know, 15 to 20 minutes tops? Feels good. Like, we we get to have a new weekly open champion. Six champions in six events. Nobody has won twice yet. I I mean, you know how much I love big storylines and stuff like that. So I would love to see somebody just go reigning back to back to back champion, being uh, the the heel of Mythgard, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. If you've uh, if you've hung out in this uh, in the Mythgard off topic Discord, you know I love wrestling. So that's that's something I would love to see develop out of this. Just see like Chumsy win five times in a row, be unstoppable, then having, like, Endo have to win or anybody. That, that David against Goliath. Oh, field. yeah, exactly. Match. That's the stuff I live for. Yeah, I don't think uh, a solution like a coin from other games would ever work. And <laughs> yeah, I'm, I I'm not opinions on that. Yeah, I'm not going to bring those opinions up now. Those those opinions can be talked about after we cut for the VOD um, from Noah. Noah has some very strong opinions about that. So uh, we'll, we'll hold off on that dis discussion, Twitch, for a minute. No, 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 no. Your, your questions are welcome here. It's just... Yeah, uh, definitely. It's but just Noah's gonna... It's something I, w I can go on about all day long, and we want the focus. It's one of, of those things. At least the commentating to be mostly on the match. And possums. Chat is a lawless and you do what you want in chat. Just keep in mind that Nightbot's a bit pushy. Yeah. Ah, uh, logic. Down to seven. Has faded Firebird in hand. Three additional cards. Yeah, so this is going to be is, close. This is tense. I think in the going second situation Logic's been put in, this is about the best situation you can hope to end up in in the late game. Yeah, is still having some advantage. Having to... Putting that back. Howling Abyssal. In there was that Howling is the Abyssal's correct that play can help for sure. Close the gap. But, but Shadow yeah, Trapeze, Fire Song Prodigy. Is this lethal? No, uh, no. One we're man at shy of the lethal. Logic has conceded. Chumsy takes it 2 0, becoming the week five champion. Well played by both. Now, I guarantee job, this Chumsy. is yeah, great job by Chumsy. I guarantee this is going to spawn the topic. Does going is going first too powerful in the Discord? I, I think we're going to get it. I don't it. think so at all. And the paths have helped to mitigate that some. This was a matchup specific thing. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. So, um. I don't believe we have any other stats or anything to talk about. So I am going to end the stream here for the VOD, but I'm going to kick it back on. So me and Noah could, uh, can, uh, continue talking a little bit before, uh, we both part ways. So give us uh two seconds. I'm going to end it here for the VOD. Congratulations to Chumsy on being our week five champion. Be right back. 